Hey, Mike. How high do you got the feeder? I haven't done it right up. Having spent $2 million stripping the 130 foot deep cold cut, Tony Beats is finally running the pay dirt he hopes will deliver half his 5,000 ounce season goal. Well, this ground is pretty frozen this spring. I'm, I'm doing my best here, but you're probably gonna have to bust them up even more over there. Yep, send me what you got and I'll slam her through. On the pay pile, high school friends Ruby and Megan work in tandem to feed the trauma 200 yards an hour. Kind of put the nightmare squad back together for a little bit. <laughs> we should do like a bucket wave at each other. <laughs> we could do that. Hi, Megan! <laughs> I want to make sure everything runs smooth and that they put enough material on that feeder. Worst thing is if they around up there. Do you look at that thing on at the belt? Pay attention to them, would you please? They'd rather learn how to feed it because if I catch them like that too often, they're off the hole. You gotta sort it before you do it. They got no time for that crap. You got a second jump? I mean, what in the does it take? This season, Tony's looking to 31-year-old son Mike to step up and run the crew. Make sure that everything runs smoothly, right? When I'm gone, it's nice that they don't have no problems. Right, right. See you guys in the yard. I'm watching the beer and the conveyor to see if any big, big, big chunks I have to worry about gonna pop out. The whole upper is supposed to watch for them. But I understand why she misses some sometimes, because they are literally just frozen chunks of pay. Damn near impossible to tell the difference. Watch out! At Paradise Hill, Tony's left his sons in charge of running the trommel, but a chunk of frozen pay dirt has jammed the top of the feed conveyor, forcing Mike to shut down. She's gotta watch a little bit more careful for them. All you want is for things to go smooth. At the other end of the conveyor, the frozen pay has clogged the hopper feeder. It's a shame I don't smoke anymore. I really want to do it right now. Ugh. We're going to try to break it up and try to get it out, and hopefully the belt moves. He is moving. Yeah. Let's try bumping it. See if we can get everything to move. So everybody off the conveyor, see who play. To dislodge the blockage, Kevin plans to bump it by surging the belt. When it's really bound up and you just press play, the belt's gonna either spin and get stuck and it's just not gonna go. You bump it, short little boom. So strong pull stop, strong pull stop. Get a little bit of roll back and then boom, and a boom. It's definitely frustrating whenever we're down. We give or take lose about $25 a minute whenever this thing is down. Pardon me? I think it's 50 these days. It's 50 these days, so great. So yeah, we're losing $50 a minute with plant being down. Right now, it doesn't seem like we're having a, a whole lot of luck. Yeah, there you go. Come on. Get going. Mike and Kevin 
have got the wash plant back up and running. Tony's taking a bit more of a step back. So there's a lot more pressure on me and Mike this year. We spent a lot of money getting new equipment so we can strip that cold cut. So me and Mike are going to have to hit it hard to keep this trauma going. Yes. Hi, honey, sweet girl. Num num. We Hi, come. guys. Long time no see. I'll start the first one of the season. Well, that'll be good, huh? At least we have something to weigh. On the Beats claim, it's time for the family's first gold weigh of the season. So, how was things? Pretty good, I think. And we only lose daytime, right? Yeah, no nights yet. It's a no little nights. dark. Three full days, I three think. Full days. Three full days. What did we spend this year, you think, to get going? Two, two and a half? No, a couple of bucks. million. A yeah, couple yeah. million bucks. Thing is, you spend, 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 and nothing comes in, and your piggy bank gets smaller and smaller. I like to replenish it. Oh, yeah, it can't all just be going out. No. Let's see the money we're going to get back, at least the start of it. I think you guys should weigh it up, see at least what we got in them three days. Having spent $2 million getting down to pay, Tony hopes the cold cut will deliver more gold than last season's first week of running, 80 ounces. Everybody ready? Ready? Oh. Let's do this thing. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty, fifty, fifty-five, sixty, sixty-five, seventy, seventy-five, eighty, eighty-five, ninety. Ninety-five point three. For three days, eh? That's not too bad for three. <laughs> worth over $170,000. If the Cold Cuts White Channel pastry continues to deliver, it could easily make up half of his 5,000 ounce season gold. Well, if it stays that nice over full weekdays and nights, that'd be good. The gold price is still fairly decent. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm not complaining there either. A lot of people glad to have it. I mean, let's not about it. We just got started, everything's running, and if we're gonna get to the 5,000 ounces, at least it's a start. We only have like 4,900 <laughs> to go. Yeah, Guys, it. let's yeah. get on there it. You go, there you go, there you go, yeah. So what are you looking for? I got a bunch of pay to sluice and our water license is up next year, so I'm looking for a plant. I thought I'd give you a try, see if you had anything kicking around. Well, we got a couple of them. I saw your uh, kiwi plant sitting on the side of the road there. Mm -hmm. I know it needs a little work, but I can make it work. You think you can make it work, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can rent you out that kiwi plant. That shouldn't be a problem. No, that's, that'd be awesome. I would just love that. I mean, no wonder they call you the king of the Klondike. Yo, I don't know what the call me. I don't care what they call me. No, I say I very well know what it feels like to have ground out there that you can't touch. Yeah. And money invested. It's not funny. Right? No. No. Anyway, we can load that thing up, bring it down there for you. Let's make a deal on it. I get a little bit of money out of it, but more so I would like to see you get that gold out of the ground. Awesome. Okay, that would anyway, be great. Shane, done deal. Awesome. So, you betcha. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. It's before beauty, young man. <laughs> Tony's 25-ton kiwi wash plant has sat idle, gathering rust all season. Lynn, you get on the wind's line? Yeah. Okay. Mike, you get in the loader for a second. To get the plant hauled quickly to Shane's claim 20 miles away at Dominion Creek, Tony assembles his best crew from the 80 pup cut. Take a chain, put it from here to there. I want to get the out of here. I have to have it as tight as possible. Okay, done. Let's go.
look at that. Boy, 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 boy. That looks like a screw up. Better go have a look at that. Huh? No, it actually didn't take that much damage. It's just pain in the Can I land to get this truck out of the way, huh? What's your plan, Dad? Say so we'll get a couple loaders out here and pick it up. I was already thinking that too, because otherwise you're gonna There'll be nothing left. So what we'll do is... throw it on the low bore, or are we just going to drive it out? Two of them, 250 and then 2600, hook them up, haul them in. Okay, good enough. Mike, you jump in with me. What should have been an easy money-making four-hour job will now take the beats twice as long. But you realize we got 300 grand laying on its side there? They're making money part of already. Mike said he was only going 30 clicks an hour, but for some reason one of them Chains broke on the, yeah, then they go, of course, right? So, anyway, flip back up. Holy pony, this isn't what I expected to see. A chain broke, tipped off, fell off on the high side, as you can see. So, go figure that one out, right? That's unreal. Yeah, it didn't seem to do much damage at all, really. Anyway, let's get it on his, on his feet first. Yep. And then uh, see what's bent out of shape. Yeah, we might have a few things to Who knows? straighten up. Hopefully, it's all good. Oh, I was expecting it just to show up in one piece. <laughs> okay, Brandon, let's go. Mike, Mike, let's go. Operator Brandon Carr joins Mike in the loaders to flip the plant back upright, ready from Maestro Tony's direction. Hook that piece of chain to the other end of the chain. Okay, Nick, bail out. So all they gotta do is we got the chain hooked down to the top. Both loaders are gonna back up. Once it tips over, they'll catch it with the bucket. Anyway, you guys are ready? Okay, gentlemen, tighten some chains and back it up. Let's go, pull. Okay, slow and let it fall in the bucket. Pull it, pull it, pull it. Back it up, Mike, back it up. Lock it down a bit, Michael. Keep it pulling, gentlemen, pull, pull, pull. Grab it up, Brandon, Brandon, back up. Keep it coming, Brandon. Okay, Mike, back up slowly. Keep up slowly. Slowly, slowly, Mike, let it down a bit. Mike, down a bit, let it down a bit, Mike. You have the whole thing, Mike. There you go, gentlemen, now you got it together, let the thing down. Perfect. Gentlemen, take the chains off. Give them a hand, throw that in there. Well, first we're gonna put it in the middle of the road so we can get equipment on both sides and we can line it up with a scissor neck, and then we'll just take it from there. Up a bit, guys, up a bit, guys, up a bit, guys. Mike, up, Mike, up, okay, good. More up, Mike, Mike, more up. Up, 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 up. Okay, hold it. Gentlemen, slowly let it up. Both of you, even, down, 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 down. Length, pull, length, pull at the same time. Okay, gentlemen, hold it, hold it, hold it, there you go. Brandon, push, Brandon, push. Okay, hold it right there. Good. Good enough, chains, gentlemen, chains. Well, we're gonna cross chain it a little higher than the last time. And so oh, it should be okay. Okay, so you're good and tight. There we go, perfect. Take it nice and easy, gentlemen, okay. Didn't go not bad at all, but there you go. If you get the toys, then you can play, right? Finally made it. <laughs> Eight hours after leaving Paradise Hill, the Kiwi plant finally arrives at Shane's Dominion Creek claim. 
Okay, gentlemen, out of the way. Okay, Mike, give it a bolt. Once he goes, go. Go! Perfect. Not bad, huh? <laughs> 28-year-old Parker Schnabel is stretched thin, running two mines in different countries. The last two weeks, I've been in Alaska. You know, we had a rough 10 days startup, and now it's starting to smooth out. We've got a plant running over there. There's gold coming in. In the Yukon, his crew are racing to mine out the massive airstrip claim before the water license expires at the end of the season. We have to get all of this mine this year. So it's basically a use it or lose it. It's important that we get everything that we have left to mine this year stripped and on pay. Half a million square feet of what we have left is not stripped. And this is pretty late in the year to be stripping. Parker's crew have already mined out 48 of his 90 acres at the airstrip, the keyhole, easy street, and bear cuts. Now they're running pay dirt through Slucifer from the 18-acre payback cut and continue to strip the last and largest of them all, the 24-acre runway cut. They need to get at least five acres down to pay this week before they can fire Big Red back up. So Big Red will sit until all the stripping's done. We really can't afford the time, but um, it's just going to mean sluicing later in the year. Down to just one wash plant, it's all hands on deck at the runway cut until it's completely stripped, except for one crew member. So right now I'm in the payback cut. You know, there's a lot to do, and I'm pretty much over here on my own. So I'm trying to keep the wash plant going. While Slucifer plant boss Tyson Lee digs out payback cut pay dirt in the 750 excavator. You know, it's just a struggle trying to keep ahead. Parker in the D11 and Foreman Mitch Blaschke in the 700 strip overburden in the runway cut. This is probably the most behind we've ever been in opening a cut and having things ready. We've had so much on our plate. And, you know, here we are just trying to get through it all and trying to do it before the snow flies. And what the? Holy Whoa, whoa. There's only one thing that smells like that, and that is coolant. That is not good. Looks like we just blew our radiator here and it's blowing right on the exhaust manifold. Not what we need right now. Yo, Taylor, you got a copy, man? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, buddy, you want to make your way over to the 700 here? It looks like it lost the radiator. We got a whole bunch of coolant spewing out right on the exhaust. I, I mean, the biggest thing here is just the lead time on getting parts. For sure, it's going to be a few days minimum to lose something like the radiator in this 700 when we've got all this dirt to move. I need another big excavator over here. Uh, not sure where I'm going to get one of those from right now. Hey! How's it going, Mitch? Oh, we've had better days. What's going on? Oh, the 700 just blew the rad. Oh, really? Yeah, like bad. The problem is we're in the middle of all that mud right now. Yeah. And without a big excavator, there's no way we got a fighting chance of getting through it. Oh, I know you're doing everything you can to keep up with Slucifer, but man, we really need the 750. Well, it sucks because, you know, we we have like no pay up right now. So the 750 is kind of key to this operation right now. I know, and that's going to leave you with a 480. As soon as Taylor gets the 700 back up and going, then you can have this thing back. But right. man, for right now, I hate to do it, but we really got no other option down there but to repo the old 750 from you. Right. I'll uh, get it back to you as soon as I can. Losing the 750 leaves Tyson with just the 480 
reducing the amount of pay he can send to Slucifer. Sadly, I'm going to have to turn Slucifer down. You know, with only the 480 digging pay, we're going to get to the point where we're out of pay. We have nothing to run. You know, lower feed rate means less gold coming in, but it's better than having no gold coming in and having to shut the plant down. With Slucifer dialed down and Big Red shut down, the chances of mining out all 90 acres are slimmer than ever. You got to pick your battles, and well, we lost this one. Um, right now, we're just stripping the runway. Seems like pretty deep mud. You know, I think there's probably a good 20 feet of mud in here, and it's a bit late in the year to be opening up the ground that has 20 feet of mud. So we're just loading that out, and we have nowhere to push it to, so it's all getting loaded out. I wouldn't say going fine, but it's going. Parker Schnabel's crew is rushing to strip the 24-acre runway cut down to pay so they can start feeding wash plant Big Red. I've got Big Red sitting on that hillside over there, waiting to wash rocks. If we had thawed pay dirt right now, it'd be up and running. I know it's really put Tyson in a tough spot here taking the 750, but it's so important that we get this ground opened up. If not, we're going to leave a lot of gold in the ground. With Mitch's 700 excavator still in for repair, Tyson's stuck in the smaller 480, struggling to dig enough pay to feed Slucifer. Had to dial down Slucifer's feed rate a little, and hopefully I don't have to dial it down anymore. But at the rate things are going, I might have to make that adjustment. And you know, it's sadly getting Big Red going. It's taking priority over keeping Slucifer fed. Taylor, I hope you got some good news for me, man. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Oh, well, you tell me. Uh, I see we got some parts here. Do indeed. The rad's dropped in. She's ready to go. All right, sounds good, buddy. Appreciate right. it. Thanks. Catch you later. Hey, Tyson. Tyson, you got a copy? Go ahead. Hey, buddy, I got a present for you if you want to meet me uh, over by Slucifer. Sounds good, man. I'm on my way. When you said you had a present for me, I'm glad it's not the EC20. No, man, we treated her good. It moved a lot of mud. It really helped out. So now we can get some pay up here and crank this baby back up. Well, I'll go turn it up and then light the fire under Froggy in my own ass. All right, buddy. Now you at least got some muscle down here for digging this. Sounds good. Thanks, All right. Mitch. Yeah, no worries, man. Thanks. So, you know, I just got the 750 back, which is the best news I've had all week. That means I can turn this wash plant back up and we can get back to running 220 yards an hour. So it's time I get us back to getting some serious pay through this plant and getting some serious gold. Parker's only working wash plant is finally back sluicing at max capacity. I'm... We've been running these wash plants hard all year, but we're going to run them the hardest right now, right to the finish line. That's it down there. Hopefully, there's a little gold in this ground here. At Parker's Indian River claim, foreman Mitch Blaschke is trying to sluice a mountain of pay dirt before the end of the season. With wash plants Big Red and Slucifer both running 24-7. To keep the plants fed, Mitch has elevated one of his green crew members from a rock truck to a loader. We've got Evan trying to train him up because he's a young guy that's really enthusiastic, wants to be out here learning the machines and how to do things, and uh, he's got a great attitude. Oh, what the is going on? Tyson, you got a copy, Tyson? There's a bunch of rocks in the sluice runs. We're going to go ahead and shut her down. Hit it! Parker's due back from Alaska. Big Red's down. We have no gold coming in, no money coming in, but a lot going out. We really need to try and hammer this out and get it done. Get us fired back up. Oh, we 
we got Big Red down this morning. It's got a lot of large material going down the sluice run. At Parker Schnabel's airstrip claim, Mitch and Tyson have had to shut down Big Red after Evan spotted rocks in the sluice runs. I'm just gonna take a look at it. You know, you see all these here? That means we have a blown out screen and it's gotta be a pretty big hole for rocks this size to be coming in. And when the rocks land in spots like this, it'll create dead spots where the gold isn't being caught. So as you can tell, the runs are littered in rocks. So I'm gonna have to go and hand pick all these out and get up in the screen deck and change that screen. You know, the material that we're running right now, as you can see from the tailings here, is really sharp, aggressive rock. So you think about all that material working its way across this wash plant hours and hours a day. And uh, you know, these screens are pretty thin to begin with. And then when you go and work that material over the top, eventually it cuts through them. So we're gonna remove the old screen, bring the new one in, get her bolted back up. The screen deck meshing separates large rocks from the finer pay dirt, allowing the gold rich material to drop through the screens. But if the screen breaks, the large rocks fall through as well. Once in the sluices, the rocks block the flow of water, stopping the riffles from catching the gold and washing it out of the end of the box. You see it? Now we've got a bad screen here. Check that one out the bottom. Yeah, just like that. It's looking good. It's been a fight getting Big Red set up, but hopefully the fight is over. She's fixed. Time to fire it up. It's a good feeling. You know, if Evan hadn't have spotted this, more and more material would have built up in the sluice runs until we're doing all this work, we're washing all these rocks, but we're not catching any gold. Running the plant by myself, knowing that they trust me to do so, it's a big step up, and I'm really happy to be taking it right now. Everything on that Hello, country. guys. What up, hey, Eddie? Man. You got our baby back in action? Back up and rolling. Well, it looks like you got her turned up. She's cranking through the dirt right now. But man, and it just you... feels good to have Big Red yeah. back up and running. Yeah, but you guys got that done in a hurry. So it's the final stretch. We just got to hunker in and keep feeding it, huh? I mean, it's pretty wild. You look down there, and that's the property line. Definitely a pretty ambitious season. And, and thank you guys for making it happen. Got two of them running again. How good is that? Hopefully we can keep it running. Hey, now. Parker. Hey, man. Happy birthday. Oh my gosh, for me? Thanks. <laughs> it's an ashtray. Oh, oh, is it real gold? It's our gold. Are you kidding me? No. Holy cow. Oh my gosh. Happy birthday. Thank you. So everything's made out of gold from here. A golden ashtray. Holy cow. You guys can expect something similar in 30 years, <laughs> 40 years. Six ninety-five. Yeah. Worth $12,000. Seems like saying thank you is not enough. You're everybody's friend out here, you know? Yeah. And we all really appreciate that. And thank that's, you. That's from the crew. Oh, thank you. Got Big Red set up and just got it up and going. So Big Red didn't get a whole lot of runtime. Day and a half. Oh, oh yeah. Want to see? Sure. Now, it's time for the first gold from the runway cut. Ten. There we go. Twenty. Thirty. Forty. Fifty-one point six. Worth nearly ninety thousand dollars. But if they can run big red for a full week it could deliver half a million. And Lucifer has been purring right along too. There's been no majors on that, so 
We got a good number here, T. Slucifer has been running dirt from the payback cut. The last cleanup produced 210 ounces. Alrighty, let's do it. 20, 40, 150, 200, 300, 330, 336.05. It's not bad. Not at all. Worth nearly $600,000. Now you get Big Red to do that too, and we'll have some pretty nice weeks. Well, are you guys happy to be done moving wash yeah. plants? It's a lot of work, that's for sure, but you know, to have Big Red there, and I mean, you look at the property lines, Right there, we're at it. So now it's a matter of just getting all that dirt through uh, through these plants and pretty crazy. Like you look at how many miles of ground we've gotten through over the years and to be uh, at the last little bit of it. Just lose it or lose it. What are you doing, man? I saw your truck on the road. I didn't know if you were broke down or something. That's always a fair chance of that. <laughs> what are you finding? We're just panning this road every year. I've driven by it and been like, should we mine that? No. But now it's the last year that we, we can't say no anymore. If we say no this year, then it's never going to get mined. This has been left because, well, it's the only section of road and there's no other way around it right through here. We have so many other things going on. But the stripping crew has a little opening, don't it? I mean, <laughs> let's just slam them in here and see what happens. It's just not just mining the road, it's building a new road, then it's coming down here, stripping this. I'm just looking at what we got going on down there. Everything's froze up. I feel like every day we're a little bit further behind. I think it's gonna be thawed. Like, the sides have been exposed. Like, I don't even think that the pay's gonna be frozen. If it's thawed, that's gonna be huge. If it's not, then I'm gonna eat a big dose of crow, Mitch. I'm not trying to mess up your schedule, but I am. Parker just added a huge amount of work to our already overloaded schedule. There's already not enough hours in the day and days left in this season to get through what we've got going on. And for Parker to want to come down here and pull out the only road, the only access we have down to where we're currently working to start another cut, I think is crazy. In three weeks, Parker will open a new operation in Alaska. In the Yukon, his two wash plants are running side by side in the bear cut and have delivered more than 1,800 ounces of gold. We're more than halfway through the ground, nearly 4 million square feet. Now, our whole season depends on keeping two plants running as long as possible. His crew have already stripped 48 acres, 36 football fields of the massive 90-acre airstrip. Now. Parker has tasked foreman Mitch Blaschke with opening even more ground. There's a whole bunch of little pieces of ground here and there that could probably make us a quick buck. If we don't do it now, we'll never get to. Parker's decided that he wants us to strip a new road, which we're calling the Panama Canal Cut. Well, we've got to move the mud and uh, get down to some pay gravels. Over a 1,000 yards downstream from the bear cut, and his wash plants. Mitch must open up a new 10-acre cut, taking Parker's total to 100. But to get to the pay, Mitch must dig up the only road connecting the camp to the cuts. To solve this problem, Mitch must also build a new road at the same time, keeping vital access to the mine site open. It's feeling pretty hard here. Put the ripper in and see what we got. Hopefully it's just compact. Everybody driving on it. You know what that is? Well, so much for it being thawed. It's big frozen chunks. Lots of ice in it. All this rock is glued together pretty much. Parker thought with there being cuts on both sides of this, that this section of the road would be all thawed out here. But you see all this water, you see all this ice here. You know, if this was all thawed, all this would have just drained off down on both sides here. 
we've chopped off our access to the wash plants and we got pay dirt and it looks like it's all gonna be frozen. Well, we got all the mud off, but uh, all the gravel's frozen. It gets tons of sun and yeah. high and dry. It makes no sense to me. Well, and the one that we needed to be thawed more than any of them is this one. Right. Uh, what do you think we should do? Well, man, I hate walking away from something after we've poured a bunch of money in it, but it's a matter of what has more gold, I guess. If we have to walk away from something, it should be this one, not the ones downstream, don't you think? We have to get out of here. I think that's the only thing we can do. Yeah, I think it's gonna be this way all year. All right, thanks, Mitch. Until the road is finished, the crew can't get back to stockpiling pay dirt at the plants, risking a double shutdown. Tyson just hit me up because it doesn't look like we've got enough dirt for night shift. That's what happens when we got so many projects, you don't do anything uh, well. This road, something that you normally like to have well ahead of time done, but uh, Parker sprung this on us. He's bouncing back and forth between lots of ideas. Now as a mine boss, you need to make a decision and stick with it. Mitch has his whole crew finishing up the last 350 feet of the new road. Do you want to try and get me a spot here where I can get this new road connected? Let the trucks know. Bob and start dumping there. Ain't gonna be pretty, but it'll work. Pretty? It never pretty. As long as it works. Parker's lucky he's got guys that are good at more than one thing. When are you hoping to finish off with your crew over there? Hurrying to try and get this done. We just don't have enough pay. So we don't have much time to do this. Time is not on our side. Trucks hauling uh, coarse tailings, which is where I want you to drop it. We're gonna tie back into that other material you've been putting down. Okay, thank you. Just machinery going everywhere, it's so intense. Parker just has such a all or nothing personality. If he's gonna do something, he does it 100%. If this was my mind site, I'd probably make the same decision as Parker did. I know I say it's risky and it's full on and there's lots going on, but as a gold miner, you just can't leave gold in the ground. Yeah, keep coming back, keep coming back. We're gonna go right off the edge here. There you go, right there. This will be a road. We got a little bit of mud on top of the gravel, so trucks that are sinking could get moving. And we got this road done. 12 hours since they began the build, Mitch and crew have finished the new access road. We got ourselves a road here. It's come along real good. It's been a lot of work. It should definitely do the job. Mitch is sending me back to the wash plant, moving the old road and building a new one. It's just like insane. I'm actually stoked I actually helped such a huge project. Hey, Tyson, you got a copy? The road is finished, and the trucks are heading back over to you right now. Yep, sounds good. I'll meet you at the wash plants. Just in time, buddy. You know, I'm pretty happy with how this road turned out. We just had to do it quick and fast, but we've got good access back down to the wash plants. One more thing that Parker's added to our already busy schedule, but somehow we were able to make it all happen. It's been a hell of a day, but, you know, I'm really happy with how things turned out here. I see some frozen chunks of pay up by the plant. Uh, it sounds like Justin and Tyson are having a real hard time with frozen material. It's just been a really cold spring, and that's, you know, it's bound to come with issues. Get out and stretch your legs. In addition to slowing down the operation, frozen chunks of pay dirt running through the plant aren't melting, leaving gold trapped inside the tailings. Hey man, I was just coming to talk to you about this exact problem. It's called permafrost for a reason, right? Because it's permanently frozen. I mean, it would help us a lot if it was more than like 35 degrees for at least like four hours. We need some warm weather. Trying to keep up with stripping and sluicing at the same time. But, and that's the problem is that we're using a lot of our manpower right now to just try to keep the plant fed. I really feel like we should shut the plant down and 
just focus on thaw and stripping. But the thing is, with this much area, if we shut the plant down, I don't know if we'll be able to get through it all by the end of the year. But we're just gonna fight it all season. If we don't put our foot on the brakes with the sluicing and, and focus on our stripping, you know? We're never gonna get to the point where we're just digging nice, clean, thawed pay. So let's go ahead and just shut it down. It's a gamble that we're just gonna have to yeah. take. We'll fire back up when the sun decides that it's summertime and make the best use to everybody that we free up. Well, I'll go up there and shut it down now and we'll just start working on getting everything taken care of down here. All right, thanks, All right. Mitch. Yep. So it's not really something that I like to do. Our rule is always that like, once we start sluicing, we are running 24 seven. But given the price of fuel and where things are at, we're much better off shutting it down for a while. Parker's gambling that shutting down Big Red will focus his crew on getting more ground stripped and exposed to the sun so that it can thaw. We're really just hoping the weather warms up for us so we can get this ground thawing out because right now, we're not making any money, we're just spending it. This gold mining gets in your veins, gets in your blood. Office manager Nona Loveless uses the 73-ton D10 dozer to rip through the permafrost. I started operating, my dad was keeping me on equipment when I was about 12 or 14. And then four years ago, I got this opportunity to come and work for Parker, and I jumped on it because I love mining. <laughs> Some of this, um, some of this material is was permafrost, and that stuff to rip is a real challenge. It's expensive. It's hard on the equipment. I am in a tough spot right now trying to get this done, but it'll come. We'll get her. Holy! Come on. That doesn't seem to be wanting to come up. Whoa, what the heck? What? Oh, my What the hell is this? Are you kidding me? The hole is lifted off the blade. This is not what we need for another machine to be down. We get nowhere, nowhere today. Hey, Jordan, you got a copy? You're not gonna believe it. The blade's peeling up. Just come and get it. Thank you. This is really thin, and it wore the welds off, so you have to take all these pieces off and then put the new pieces in that we have. What's going on, man? Why are you pulling that thing out of here? Ah, uh, the skin's peeling right off. Obviously, that froze Just grabbed the bottom and peeled it up. Oh, no way. It's crazy how abrasive that stuff is to wear the steel down that hard. Yeah, didn't think it was going to go away that quick. Well, yeah, the sooner we can get her back in action, the better off we're going to be. Yeah. I mean, yeah, kind of timing, but. Yeah, couldn't be any worse. Wasting a lot of money here. This is. Boys are asking for this. They got a lot of frozen ground. Big Red's down right now. Back at Parker's yard, mechanic Ty Smith and specialist welder Dan Colon are fighting to get the D10 back in action. Our blade skins are ripping apart. Dan's giving us a hand here. He's cutting everything apart. We'll get the new skin put on here, and then this D10 can go back to pushing some mud, and we can keep opening up ground. We're getting this done as fast as we can. We need this machine running. It'll be nice to get this thing back out in the cut and ripping some dirt. Right on, yeah, she's solid. Sweet, we'll get the truck ready and uh, get this thing down there. Hey, Mitchell. How you doing, man? Oh, not too bad. What up, what up? 
the Schnabel crew are finally back running after shutting down because of frozen pay. So we had a short run. Obviously, short. we spent some time with Big Red down. Yeah. But, I mean, we did get some thawed pay dirt up to the plant. Yep. We got it through it. How much gold was in it? All right, Duman, let's see this. Come on. Short week. Short week. Can we break 100? Oh, 20. it's going to be tight. 40, 50, 60, 80, 100, 120, 130, 140, 150, 163.5. Worth over $290,000. Not bad for a short week. No. For the week, we got the 163 and a half, and the season total, it's 525.65. It's not right. bad. When you look at how early we started, oh, yeah, that's we early knew we were going to fight frost. Yeah. You know, I'm not surprised we had to shut the plant down, but still don't like it, because with how much dirt we have to get through, we need that thing running every day we can. Judging by the way things going, you better order the cold weather gear. Yeah. We're going to be here late. So it's loose until November, Mitch. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting my Christmas tree ornament set up. Yeah. Send me a text on how you did, will you? <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Chris. Yep. Later. See you, Dumit. OK. No, everybody's doing good. Equipment's staying together for the most part. Gold's still coming in. It's a little sad when you can pull in like a quarter million dollars worth of gold and still not make money, though. On the far side of the claim, Parker's chasing a pay streak in the four-acre wolf cut, which he's banking on delivering a 1,000 ounces this season. If we can get a nice size pit down, the gold should be really good. It's kind of late in the year, so we've got to get going on this. To access pay dirt 30 feet down, the crew must haul out 100,000 yards of overburden. So we'll take like four more feet off this and get us down to water level. And then it's like 30 feet to bedrock from there. We want to sluice the bottom six. You know, working right next to this pond, the water is going to be the number one problem in here. The perfect situation is partially frozen mud because it um, keeps the water out. I'll do whatever it takes to get everyone some gold here. New recruit Michael Bodry spent his childhood working on his parents' farm. Growing up, uh, having cerebral palsy, uh, there were, there'd be a lot of people that say, you know, oh, you shouldn't do that. And uh, what I'm trying to never let uh, anyone else's words define me. This cut's getting muddy. The biggest thing is just trying to keep from getting stuck. A guy can't sit in one spot for very long. Uh, kind of like I am now, before the track starts sinking away. Kind of like dealing with uh, a, a bad custard. Hey, Parker, you got a copy? Yeah, what's up? This cut's getting pretty wet. Um, I'll, I'll come over there. Jesus Christ. The more area we open up, the worse the mud gets, and we haven't even gotten like a fifth of the cutout. The wolf cut sits alongside an old dredge pond, with just a narrow berm separating the two. As the crew dig down, they expose frozen permafrost, holding back the water. Now thawing, it's allowing the pond water to seep through the berm, flooding the cut. There's going to be a lot of water soon. Yeah, the best thing to do is get a sump in there. Yep. 
give it a try. We'll put a pump sitting right there, right? With a discharge going up there? Yep. Perfect. Parker's plan to conquer the water is to dig a sump pond at the deepest point in the cut. But hopefully we'll have a, a deep enough hole here pretty quick where all the water can collect. And install an eight inch pump to drain it. Can you get at it? Yeah. It's really cool to see Parker being hands on and wanting to get this cut uh, opened up as bad as the rest of us. There you go. Now all that's left to do Thanks, Thanks, Mark. Guys, I'll see you tomorrow. See you. is wait. Oh. Where's our pump? I stayed out late last night because we like had our pump in and everything was going very good. And then the pump stopped pumping and we have a lake instead of a cut now. Overnight, the pump system failed, flooding the cut and submerging the pump under four feet of water. Oh, us. We just put half a million dollars into this. I would have had better odds just going to Vegas with all the money. The pump was like completely underwater, and I couldn't get out to it to walk to it. I got a little kayak over here, paddled out there with a chain on the excavator, and get it up on dry ground so we could work on it. It must have shut off or the silt got in there and plugged it up. Foreman Mark Fors reckons the suction filter at the end of the hose became blocked with debris, causing the water level to rise, submerging the entire pump. In an attempt to get it going, he stripped and serviced the engine. As extra insurance, Mark has come up with an ingenious plan to ensure any further flooding won't harm the pump. Hopefully this bed of old pontoons will float it in case it does flood again and we don't have to worry about it. I took all the fuel lines off, turbo. I took the manifold off. You are a mechanic. Well, I mean, it, I did everything but rebuild it, so hopefully it lasts. To have any hope of getting down to wolf cut pay dirt. Let's get the pump back in the spot it needs to be. Mark's floating solution needs to work. I think this will take care of our water problem. Hey, look at that. Ready to fire it up. Pumping? Yeah, it's pumping. Pump back in service. Good job. We definitely have to keep an eye on it tonight. Hopefully, we can get our cut dried out and get back at it. It all comes down to getting the two plants running and needing to really push through as much of this ground as we can. I'm going to just talk to Mitch about all this stuff and make sure that they're on track. To get both plants running, 
Parker turns to foreman Mitch Blaschke. How's it going? Good, how are you? Oh, not too bad. Trying to make some headway here. Getting two plants up and going, this is a critical move of the year, right? I'm gonna go over to Fairbanks, so I'm not gonna be here. Do you feel comfortable about where you're at? Big Red's doing a good job down there, but we're falling behind on getting through the square footage we need to without two plants going. Yeah. When you get back, hopefully we've got uh, wash plant pad done, two sluice first set in there. Two plants going. Two plants banging. All right, see you, man. Sounds good, man. Have a good trip. Parker's leaving to get the wheels in motion on the Alaska claim he plans to open in just weeks. Mitch is left with five days to get Slucifer running. You know, approaching the middle of summer, pretty soon here, the days are going to start getting shorter. So each day, it's just clicking by faster and faster. We need to have Slucifer on that new wash plant pad. To hit Parker's target, Mitch plans to drag Slucifer onto a massive 30-foot high pad. Then, install the super stacker to feed pay dirt up to the top of the 18-foot high plant, where it will be washed, cleaned of its gold, and the worthless tailings can fall to the ground out of the way, making them easier to remove. All righty, she's all lashed up. Shall we? To the top of the mountain, yeah. let's go. The super stacker fixed. The crew must now race to get Slusa for running pay before Parker returns from Alaska. We got a lot of work to do here and we're running out of days already. Super Stacker heading down to the cut. This is the last piece of the puzzle. Parker's crew are nearly ready to fire up Slucifer. First, they have to connect the 120 foot Super Stacker. Looking right there, Mitch. Here we go, the moment of truth. Is it going to lift and is it going to reach the pre wash? Oh yeah, keep it coming up. We are just going to clear the pre-wash. And... Looking good! Oh yeah. Woo! Big moment! This is what we've been waiting for and working at all day, buddy. Let's do it! Here we go, my first scoop of 2022 season in Slucifer. Game's on. This is what it's going to take if we got any shot at getting through all this ground. It's two wash plants running, so it feels good. How's it going? You're washing rocks. Are you guys happy with that setup? Yeah, it seems to be working pretty good. Sweet. As long as the end result is some money, it's all about. Well, we're sure spending it like we're making it. How things been going in Alaska? Good. Just me and a couple others, three of us. But we'll just start stripping and build a plant pad and get some stuff sorted out. You're thinking a wash plant setup over there and week and a half or a couple so? couple weeks. All right. I'm going to go work on a training plan. Do we all need training? For the first time this season, Parker has both his wash plants running pay dirt and is one step closer to mining out the 90-acre airstrip and opening up his Alaska operation. Boys have wash plants sorted out, so with uh, sluice for up and running, and we stay on schedule here. At Indian River, 
Parker finally has two wash plants running. But not long enough for Slucifer to deliver for this week's gold way. Hey! <laughs> Stay out of there. The next thing you hear is gush. <laughs> <laughs> well, doom it back to work for you. <laughs> yeah. So what happened with this conveyor? <laughs> that plug just, the top of it blew right out. I mean, it was just tiny. And the drill's sitting up there. They're doing that engine swap on it. Horn Liam's drill. And like, oh no. It's parked yeah. in our yard, right? Don't park your personal vehicle down in the yard. No. OK, you want to see what kind of gold we got? Parker's other wash plant, Big Red, has been sluicing easy street cut pay all week. All right, Chris, what have you got for us? So here we go. 30, 50, 80, 100, 120, 140. Keep her going. 162.85. Worth over $290,000. For the season, we just broke 1,500, 1,506.6 ounces. Last year, at this time, we were at 863 ounces. Wow. But you gotta remember, we also started sluicing, what, almost, almost two weeks earlier this year? Well, that's the idea. Yeah. We got, gotta keep the push on. 1,500 ounces this early in the season, that's not we're bad almost, at all, guys. Yeah. We're almost double what we were last year. Exactly. We're on track for a record season, whether we do it or not. You know, we won't know until we start hogging some of that other ground, but. It's only been one plant up until here. Big Red did a hell of a job. Slucifer's got going now. Things have to work right. You're going to fight. It's going to make or break the season. No pressure. No pressure, but <laughs> no pressure, but uh... don't f it up. Hey, I found a pressure relief somewhere. <laughs> oh yeah, Alex is just trying to get rid of pressure for us. Uh, oh, I thought you didn't need that much. Pressure. Alex, our designated pressure relief man. Yeah. We're running out of ground. We gotta know where we're going next. Putting a lot of my eggs in the third bank's basket. If there's lots of gold down there, it doesn't matter. Mine boss Parker Schnabel is readying himself for Judgment Day. After sinking hundreds of thousands of dollars into a new claim in Alaska, the young miners banked 108 ounces from tailings left behind by old timers. But the real score is the wolf cut, virgin ground which could hold over 2,000 ounces, worth more than $3 million. This wolf cut is a really important pit maybe the most important one of the whole season in terms of just what information we get from it. Just to get down to the wolf cut's pay layer has taken Parker's crew more than two months. The wolf cut, it's been an absolute <laughs> with the amount of water that's coming in at us and just the conditions are brutal. Things. Three weeks ago, a devastating flood turned the wolf cut into a lake. Probably would have had better odds just going to Vegas with all the money rather than drowning in here. After battling back the water, Foreman Mark Fours is finally down to pay dirt. And Parker's determined to discover if there's enough gold to go all in. Hey, man. Hey. What's going on? How you been? Good, good. What you got going on? So we just got down to gravel here and got the mud off, and I think it's a good spot to test it, right? Because this would be the lowest gravel right now in our cut. I'm just going to work my way up panning. Yeah. Uh, if there's gold in it, we'll sluice it. Yeah. So that just had two tiny little fly in it. Too small. <laughs> Where were you panning at? It's right over there. You 
Yeah. That's more like it. That's super fine. But there's 35. And like 35, even tiny colors, is a really good pan. Yeah. Because we're panning some gold in it and some of it doesn't have gold in it, just haul a couple thousand yards up. OK. So I'm just going to rip out of here, be back in two days. And I want to see what's in it. Yep, sounds good. OK. Bye. Hey, Mike. You know, it's puking in the hole on the wall there. It is. OK, that does not look good. It looks like our good friends Mother Nature and Murphy's Law are uh, at it once again. Oh, it's got a big chunk coming up. Oh, she is pouring out. Wow. Hey, Mike. I'm about to get out of here fast. It's come up eight inches in the last 10 minutes. me. What's going on, Tyler? Zach, I don't have time for this. Our cut's about to flood. Well, definitely didn't expect this to happen. While digging for pay in the bottom of the wolf cut, the 480 excavators struck the side of the pit and uncovered a waterlogged mine shaft, flooding millions of gallons of water into the pit, covering the pay gravels. Yeah, you can see where all the water that's coming out of here, there's a lot of water that's, that's probably twice that going in. The crew already have one eight-inch pump, but it's not enough. Okay, um, Mark, where is the here? Do we have an extra pump to put in there? Hey, Phil, let's get a little hustle going on. We gotta get these hooked up. Good, Mark? Yep. Uh, we got the second pump working, but it's still flooding. There's water coming in everywhere. We're not gaining. The two pumps in there aren't working. We need another pump in there ASAP. After firing up two pumps, Parker's crew are still losing their fight with the water. We're, we're in the absolute now. It's chaos. The two pumps we got in there just aren't working. They're not gaining on the water. I think we're just going to have to pull the pump from the wash plant, which I, I just don't know if that's the right decision. I'm trying to call Parker, but he's not answering me. And I don't want to be the one to make this decision. This is his gold, it's his mine site. I just don't know what to do. This is a huge call. I think I'm just going to have to pull that pump out of there. It might piss Parker off, but right now we're about to lose all the pay in the wolf cut. Tyler makes the hard call and shuts down wash plant Red Rocket to steal its massive 10-inch pump and double their draining power. got three pumps going now. We'll be here tomorrow, and we'll, we'll see where the level's at, and we'll go from there. As you see where all the bubbles are, you can still see the water perking in pretty bad. This is an absolute nightmare. Worst case scenario. Yeah. Hopefully it's not the end of the season for us, and we want to keep attacking this and get down to that bay again. A little heartbreaking when the water started to come in. Really don't want to leave. Want to see what's at the bottom, but that's up to Parker. The three pumps have removed 10 million gallons of water in 24 hours. We're down to where we need to get the muck out of it, so we're trying to get the mud out of this hole that washed in there when it flooded. They're building a road over here. It's blocking a big hole that was coming up out of the old shaft underground. Now Parker's back from the Yukon expecting to see the wolf cut's first cleanup. You missed the great flood. We chucked three pumps in there to try and pump out some of the water. If 
That ain't good. Yeah, so much mud. Got a mess on your hands, that's for sure. Yes, we have like four foot of muck in this last section to get off. What a pain in the Thanks for coming over. I just wanted to let you know that I'm going back to Alaska. OK. So when you get back, you want to see old airstrip out, new airstrip in? Well, the new airstrip in, and hopefully we can start <laughs> stripping on the old one. Gotcha. I mean, it's still a lot of work to finish. I know. I mean, your existing one's pretty terrible. So as long as it's an improvement on that, you're fine. Okay. And it's not very flat. No. And it's not very long. Yeah. And it's very narrow. OK. But you are going to be the one flying in and out of it. So I don't. I don't want to see, uh, oh, that wasn't quite long enough for, uh, End up in, yeah. upside down in the pond. <laughs> no, I don't want that either. Parker heads back to Alaska to keep his new operation on track. Back and forth like a yo-yo. When he returns in five days, he wants to tally up two weeks worth of gold. Parker's crew have finished stripping the bear cut and are running the dirt through both of his wash plants, but need to open up more ground to stay ahead. Starting with the 2,000 foot long runway that Parker uses to fly in and out of the Yukon. A thousand feet southeast, his crew must now also build a new airstrip to keep the skies open. We're using whatever good material we can find to build the airstrip on them. Tyson Lee paves the way for the new runway. Make sure it's smooth and level and 1,000 feet long. But without the power of their D-11 dozer, Parker's crew won't be able to keep up with the wash plants and risk running out of pay. Jordan, what's happening, man? Uh, you're probably going to tell me. <laughs> Well, so I was running this thing down on the runway. Notice, see how loose this track is? She looks like she's about ready to let go. We're kind of in a pickle without it. I do have spare used tracks okay. in the boneyard. Are they any good? They'll probably string on this thing and it'll move. I'll, I'll go look at them. Ryan's in the yard, so we'll go dig them out and okay. see, uh, see what we can make of it. Well, the sooner you can get her back running, man, the better off we are. Getting replacement tracks for the D-11 will take weeks. Mechanic Jordan Sands is gambling on a rusty set of spares to do the job. Think of it like a train track. Hook the new one up in line so it just train tracks right onto the next track. Jordan lines up the old and new tracks so the dozer can roll across. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. It's good. It's fine. You just can't run the loader very well. He got a really bad temper. I've known him since I was two. It's very funny. We have a lot of fun. Go up and back up. OK, so we made a train track. Choo-choo. I'm just making sure that the idlers and the rock guards are staying square in the old track so that when the, he comes onto the new track, it lines up perfectly and we have no issues. If it falls off this track, it's a horrible event and it'll take hours to get it back on. Looking good. Gotta get her on. Jordan pulls the new track up over the rollers by backing up the dozer. Oh, we got 
to redo everything again. Some profound words I was using there. You want to just go ahead? I'll just run the chucks, chase the chain back over. When you're going over the sprocket, the, the hook just grabbed the sprocket and it just undid the chain. We're just gonna snug it up with this crescent wrench here. We're really close. We're just putting the bolts in. We're gonna torque them and tighten the track. And then they can go back to work and be happy, happy. Ta-da! Now the D11 is back in action. Mitch and his crew race to strip the old runway, build the new runway, and keep the wash plants fed. So we got a lot of work just cutting this airstrip out let alone moving the material underneath it. Time to get back after it, get some dirt moved. We've just completed our new airstrip, and uh, we're gonna give it a little test drive here in the pickup and see how it feels. Hopefully it's pretty smooth. Parker took off on the old airstrip. He's gonna be landing on this one. Mitch and Tyson have finally completed the new 2,500 foot long runway on Parker's claim. Feels pretty good in the pickup. Hopefully it feels that good in an airplane. It's long, pretty flat. Uh, we got in here, graded it, rolled it with the trucks. Really, the next thing is uh, moving the wind socks down here, and this thing's gonna be ready to go. Did it just kind of back up? Yep. That'll work perfect. There it is, right there. That's a finishing touch. Hopefully everybody likes it. Parker is back in the Yukon, ready to see how much gold his crew has banked in the past two weeks. Well, it looks like the boys got the old, uh, the old airstrip out and a new one in. And we landed on it, and I'm alive. So I guess it works. We'll see what kind of trouble these guys got into while I was gone. The Clayton brothers are setting up for their first night shift of the season. Should be good. Yeah, it's a boy's first night uh, on their own, so we trained them up for uh, a couple days there. So we figured we'll take off the training wheels and, and see what they got. Well, you ready to go? Ready to go. We definitely need you guys to wash as much pay as you can through blackjack. It means more gold for us, all right? <laughs> that means we kick bread in the ass and we all drink whiskey at the end of the year. Let's <laughs> rock. With the Claytons heading back to camp, Justin feeds blackjack in the loader as Michael clears coarse tailings in the 349 excavator. Yeah, our first night being here, um, nervous about up. My biggest fear is shutting the plant down always. And I know Brandon and Brady are really counting on us. So the pressure's on us tonight to keep everything running smoothly. What do you think, Justin? You feel comfortable running that loader over there? Oh, dude, this thing's my Dude, I'm slapping this around like no tomorrow. I think they need to get me a bigger one. Yeah. Dude, things are running great tonight. Blackjack's just chewing through paint. Yeah, exactly. I didn't think that we do as good as we honestly have. Dude, we're kicking ass. Yeah. Fred doesn't know what the coming for him. Like, when he sees the amount of pay we move on night shift, he's going to be running scared. Yeah, hopefully it stays like this. Night shift, baby! Night shift, baby! No, 
Oh, oh. There's a no dirt in the feeder. Oh, great. Shut it down! What happened? This thing stopped spinning. Hey, Brandon, you might want to get down here. We've got a bit of a problem. Oh, with what? Oh, we can't get the feeder to spin. It looks like this input shaft here has off. Ah, uh, we'll be right there. Oh, she split. Yeah. Half the shaft's in the gearbox. Oh. I don't know how we're going to fix that. We had a machine shop do it last year. But it also took a week to get it machined, and we don't have that time. No. I don't know what we're going to do. Well, we just need to get it up and running fast. So if you think you can weld it. Don't have the tools to do that. Well, it's worth a shot. It's all we can do. Right. All we can do. The feed belt delivering pay dirt to the wash plant is driven by a head pulley linked to a gearbox by a steel shaft. But the shaft has snapped. To fix, Brady will insert a threaded rod into the head pulley, drill a half inch hole down the center of the shaft before threading it onto the rod and welding it to the pulley. Only then can the gearbox be remounted and the hopper put back into action. While Brady welds his service truck into a makeshift machine shop, Brandon installs the replacement ready rod into the head pulley. OK, that's good. So we'll just line it up right there. OK, we're going to drill the out of her. This is probably one of the most critical points of the whole operation is to get this hole straight for that uh, ready rod to go through and, and thread on. And we're doing it on the tailgate of the service truck. Looks all right. Yeah. And we look like we're like millimeters out. I mean, if we're only a millimeter off, then that's pretty good for the bush. Yeah, a lot of the bigger guys like Parker and Tony, uh, they might think we're silly for trying to do it, but um, you have to tr at least try. There you go. And if anybody can do it, it's Brady. This is basically a turning point of the season. For all I know, if we can't get her fixed and we can't get her feet running, we're and we should go home. Did you want to check it or what? Yeah. It's like a thousandth of an inch out, so I mean, it's going to have to work. We got it as straight as we can do with the tools we got, so we'll slip it in. OK, come ahead, boy. OK, come ahead. Uh, slowly come down. Keep going. There you go. OK. So the last step is the most important piece of it all, the gearbox. OK, just hang on, hang on. There you go, there perfect. You go. And then it's just a matter of putting the chain on. Good. Well, if it doesn't work, I don't know what the next step is, but I know we put our heart and soul into her. We so. did. Yeah. Yeah, guys. Ready? Yeah. Let's fire the Give up. her, man. How are we looking? There's no wobble. And so far, there's no cracks in the weld, which is good. I think it'll last, hopefully for the end of the season, but fingers crossed. Well, she's running, that's good. Let's just keep her going so we can stay ahead of Fred, so we better get back to Hall and Pay. 
To hit their new 200 ounce goal, they need golden acres to pay out at least 25 ounces a week. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 7.2. Worth $12,000 bringing their total to 126 ounces, eight ounces ahead of Fred, but way below their target. This just sucks. Yeah. Even though we had that breakdown of the yards that we ran, we should have got more. Here we are halfway through the season. We're not even close to our 5,000 ounce goal. Klondike legend Tony Beats has been mining 11 weeks banking just over a thousand ounces of gold but he isn't happy we better start getting after it a bit and uh, start producing a little bit more it is a very very good thing that we get two cuts on the gold tony's chasing paradise hill's elusive white channel pay streak in two of his deepest cuts the six acre blue cut and the nine acre cold cut but over the last six weeks, he's had to bow to Mother Nature, losing precious sluice time, waiting for permafrost pay dirt to thaw. We're back at the cold cut here. That is still a huge amount of pay dirt that is still sitting down there. Seems to be all thawed, so now we can keep on sluicing. Get a night shift crew together and get running 24 hours a day. To make up for lost time, Tony plans to double his production and sluice day and night for the first time this season. To man the night crew, three Greenhorn truck drivers have been drafted in. We got a bunch of new faces, a bunch of young fellas. Oh, I'm just loving it. Love the rock trucking. Pretty sweet spot, man. I'm, uh, I'm excited for the season. It's really great over here, trying to work up the ladder. I hope I can work in the yard and maybe learn some mechanics. Really excited to see some actual gold right out of the ground. It'd be a lot different than just seeing it on jewelry. Before they're thrown into the night shift, the rookies must prove they have the qualities Tony's looking for. We have to train. And I mean, they're just like green. They don't have a clue. If they work and they have a half a brain, they have ambition, they can get a little bit of training in just about anything. They can be starting mechanic and welding this, that. If they were really into it, they could find a direction here that would carry them through life. I worked for the Beats first year ever mining when I was 19, and then I went and did some other things, and then I worked for Parker, and then I came back to Tony last year. As an apprentice turned trusted worker, Megan Godet is in charge of training the Greenhorns. We had quite a few new faces last year. A lot of them didn't last. So hopefully these new guys will have what it takes and can last out the season. Come to the plant. Come to the plant. I'm at the plant right now. Don't go forward it or anything, but start being more efficient, please. We really gotta get going. Tony needs each greenhorn to haul 15 loads an hour to the wash plant. We are only getting maybe eight to 10, so we've really gotta step it up and get moving, okay, guys? Yes, sir, sounds good, man. I have to keep a good pace going to keep up with Megan. I fix tomorrow what you can fix today. Machines running last way better when you take care of them, so a little bit of love goes a long way. Back at the yard, lead mechanic Kevin Beats is servicing the trucks needed for the Paradise Hill Blitz. In the truck number four. Okay, everybody listen, everybody listen. Truck number four is broken and overheating. Who's driving it? 
Thomas is running it. Thomas, who signed the tag on that truck? Who signed the lockout tag? I don't know. Can you check? Or is it not signed? Because those are two very different things. Yeah, it's not signed, sorry. Okay, specifics, folks. They matter. People don't listen and they're not that bright. That's the whole story right there. Oh, boy. Kevin uses lockout tags to indicate machines that need to be fixed before being used. It's a rookie mistake Thomas might not recover from. I don't think I was very happy. I just seen him flying down the hall road. I was getting on that truck, but I seen the lockout tag out, and I didn't get on it. Yeah, when you take a, take a truck with a lockout tag, that's a pretty big <laughs> because you can <laughs> up really quick. Thomas risked a blown engine driving the stricken truck. Tony, Tony. Back up. And now, Tony has found out. What a Every company looks for guys that are on the ball, because on the end of the day, a company is only as good as the people it employs. But you know what? We got young fellas, so we'll just have to be a little bit ruder and explain to them how that works around here. I don't really know what to say. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Hopefully, he can get back in a truck, or we're going to be short on trucks again. You, oh, you get in the truck the back out. Sorry? You get in the truck the out. OK. 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 Then I have to go. Should have paid attention. Because if it was something else and that list to keep driving around, they blow a engine on you. It's that simple. Tony has given Thomas a second chance to prove himself. This time in a signed out and fully serviced rock truck. Some of them drivers, they're not mechanically inclined. So you got to get on the case and they got to listen. Thomas back in the cut. The Greenhorns are a full squad again. The more trucks, the better. We are all trying to do our best as fast as possible. Hey, dirt's flying up pretty good. Hey guys, so you're looking good. Seems like they build up the PayPal. At the end of their shift, the Greenhorns have hit Tony's 15 load an hour target. I mean, we always have our challenges with these new operators. They seem to figure it out. It's nice to see these new drivers available to keep up, you know, bringing the pay in and to work with Megan. I mean, that's what it takes, this teamwork that gets it on the go. So, yeah, no, they did pretty good. How's it going out the mic? Uh, steady. Time is getting shorter. Winter is on the way. I would like to find the piggy bank with some more pay in it. What about 80 pop? 80 pop, that stuff that we got rained out last year? Yeah, all you have to do is dig a drain, and you can get the drain it. But you have no up. choice, there's a lake there. Oh, I know. That could be a fair amount of pay in that. Yes, right. a lot of that nice white stuff, too. Mike's idea? Go back and look for white channel pay in a section of the 80 pup that was stripped last season, but then flooded and abandoned. If the pay streaks down there, it lies under 20 feet of water. Well, uh, to drain all that, we better build a big pond, huh? I'd say there is 100 acres down here. It's been dredged out. Yeah, you already got one of the walls built, and then you got to build up one side, and you're pretty much good to go. 
Can't wait. I think that's a good plan. Let's build a new pond. Take an excavator mm -hmm. and then clean all the trees from the bank and everything. Put them up against the hill. Uh, oh, then... don't worry. I'll make sure I get it all nice and clean. Anyway, if you can get that done yesterday, that'd be good. Yes. <laughs> yeah. OK, Dad, right. I'll go get my time machine. OK, you go do that. Tony wants it done in just five days. Come on. This thing was designed to rip out of ground. While Mike strips the pond perimeter, Fever coming. cousin Mike directs rock trucks hauling in gravel to build the dike. Dump it there. Fine tailings mixed with gravel. And it's really good for building because it has the fine sand in it. And when you drive on it, it packs and it becomes really hard. This season, Tony's lost precious hours using iron from the cuts to build dikes. To speed things up, he's invested $700,000 on two new secret weapons. Belly scrapers. Awesome. Hitched to a couple of 469 horsepower rock trucks, Tony's new toys are ideal for building dikes and roads. We're going to load them up, and we're going to go try them out, see what it can do. Oh! It is a multi-purpose thing. You know, you can do more than one thing with them. Basically, what they do is, when you unload them, they just keep on driving. They just lay, they spread out the food and material, and then bingo, they're gone. A 12-foot blade underneath scrapes and flattens the gravel into a smooth road. Usually, you have to get a grader or a dozer to level off a new path. In case you be able to make a pass through and just scrape the dirt just a little bit, and that would make for a beautiful road. And half the time without using a grader. Okay, how is that scraper doing then, Mike? Not too bad. So you're getting used to it a bit? Yeah, I just have to get used to it, and then it's, uh, it's working fine. The biggest problem with those things is you can't see what the you're doing, so you pretty much got to do it by feel. Tony just hit me with his counterweight. That's not good. I just got hit by Tony. Because there's not a lot of room, I was really close to him. And uh, I thought he knew, because a couple times it went really well. And then when I left, I think uh, he forgot that I was there or something, but then he hit me. No, I swung into it a counterweight oh, when yeah. he was behind me, yeah. Actually, it went pretty good, because I hit him down there, too. You see that? And these are still alive, so did OK. After a close call, Tony's belly scraper is back to finishing the pond to drain the cut. So far, these things seem to be doing a pretty nice job. You got to try new things. You cannot be stuck in the past. I mean, that just doesn't work. That's perfect. With the flooded 80 pup cut draining into the new pond, the beets gather to weigh a week's running 24-7 from the blue cut expansion. So I hear cousin Mike had some excitement with the scraper. Well, he cut the corner a little tight. So he and I tipped that thing. You got to pull it out, get this, get that. So got it out, nothing, nobody hurt, nothing broke, so it's good. That's the most important thing, isn't it? Right. Anyways. Um... That's all being said and done. I think we should weigh some gold. Wait up. You count his name, Mom? Yeah, I'll count. 10, 20. To stay on track for his 5,000 ounce goal, Tony needs at least 350 ounces a week. 
$250.36. Worth $766,000. That's not bad. Yeah. That's pretty damn yeah. nice. Bringing Tony's season total so far to 2,547 ounces, worth over $4.4 million. Yeah. Now we can get the 80 pup cut to produce until the end of the season. We should not have any problems getting to a 5,000 ounce goal, I think. I just hope there's enough there to keep us going, mm. so I think it's on the up and up. <laughs> Looking good. I should be able to buy all kinds of with that. Like, can I pay some bills first from the you bought before? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, let's roll out. See you guys later. Well, that was a pretty good gold win. Not a bad number to see on the scale. Hopefully we got a couple more like that. That was pretty good. And now that we did, we just pumped out that 80 pop. So we're getting that white channel out of there. And that's always been good. I think that'll carry us through to the end of the season. No, we'll get there. I think so. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Mike did a good job with the settling punch, so it's all good. Anyway, I'm going to get back out there, see if we get some more. What do you think? Right. Sounds like a plan. Okay, later. See you later. Two thirds of the way into his season, Klondike legend Tony Beats is still two and a half thousand ounces shy of his 5,000 ounce target. We got some decent gold out of the gold cut and the blue cut. However, that is just not going to get us to our 5,000 ounce gold. Anyway, the gold cut is finished for the season. So now we're going to clean up the last of the blue cut. In a week or so, it should be pretty much done. Tony's crew have mined out the last thawed pay dirt in the nine acre cold cut. Are down to the final scraps in the seven acre blue cut. And have drained the 80 pup cut to chase gold rich white channel pay, which should deliver over 2,000 ounces of gold. While the Trommel runs the last of the blue cut, Tony heads back to the 80 pop to locate the fabled white channel pay streak. Coming down here now, you look in the hole, it's got to be 10 feet of red. That stuff really, really didn't cut it for me. Last year, it seems to be too much gold in it to throw it away, and not quite enough gold in it to make a living out of it. There may be a nice little piggy bank in here yet. We'll find out. The Beats now face a race against time to expose all the white channel pay before the blue cut runs dry. It is always nice to line the next piggy bank. We got some decent coming out of this hillside. Whoa, 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 whoa. I believe I found a marmotask. <laughs> Whoa, that certainly is. Look at him. Tusks is not that big of a discovery, but if there's something attached to it, that's a whole different story. It's very rare that I find a tusk like this sticking out of the bank. This could be, who knows? Two months ago, a gold miner in northwest Canada has stumbled upon an incredible, as well as unexpected find, a mummified baby woolly mammoth, thought to be more than 30,000 years old. The discovery in Yukon's Klankite gold fields is the first near complete and well-preserved woolly mammoth found in North America. The baby mammoth was unearthed just 40 miles from Paradise Hill and isn't the area's first groundbreaking discovery. A couple of years ago down here, we found a horse head here that is related to a donkey and a zebra by DNA. That was one of the older skulls ever discovered. I see it from the kids. I mean, they like to see like that. Kevin, Monica, and Mike, Lee Gabi. Okay, can you guys come up here? I just found a mastodon tusk sticking out of the bank. The 
See that, Calvin? Hmm. Interesting. Wow. Holy. That's the first time we see one sticking out of the bank, isn't it? That's yeah. Nice and polished right there, too. Oh, yeah. Mike, you go dig it up. Oh, I'm yeah. always the one on a piece of equipment. because you're the okay, best. Good. Not too close, not too close. You got another one? Hey, Dad! One sec. Let's see. Jawbone? I think you might be right on that. The rest of that might even be in there. OK, hang in there. Oh, I got to think. Oh, yeah. Just may want to phone them paleontologists, and then they can dig the rest out themselves. I think oh, that's probably yeah. a smarter idea. You might have a whole skull in there if you're pulling oh, out pieces oh, like that. I think you should definitely call them. But especially coming off like them finding that oh, baby mammoth, that, see, well, nothing else besides it's good for the scientific community. And like this, you don't find all the time. If we're going to do that, we're going to lose going in the cut. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. Tony's called a stop to all mining in the 80 pup to bring in a team of paleontologists who'll examine and remove the tusk. But as a result, his plan to stockpile white channel pay before they run out of blue cut pay dirt is at a standstill. I mean, that there's something we really don't need right now. Oh, I've never seen a tusk quite like that before. It looks pretty cool, actually. Now, a team of paleontologists have arrived to investigate and determine if there are any more mammoth remains in the area. This is one of the few sites where we've gotten another mummified remain, so it's pretty exciting. It's nice that we can slowly expose it in situ, and it tells us a lot more. We'll have to clear away some of that material to get a better sense. Hopefully there's a skull in there. It's hard to say. I'm going to put it down right here. We followed the rest of the tusk to the back and found the end of it. It's just not attached to the skull. OK. 295. 295. That is 53. Based on the length and also the circumference, we know that it's male. Probably 30 years old. The team haven't found mummified remains this time, but they've unearthed a 10-foot-long tusk belonging to a magnificent beast that roamed Paradise Hill over 30,000 years ago good candidate for further analysis. We don't often find a lot of big mammoth pieces. There's Tony. How's it going? We were able to extract this nearly complete tusk from the section. Oh, it's actually pretty nice, huh? We found part of a skull, but it's not attached. So you can start mining again. That's great news. Mike, are you copy? Yeah. Get everything moved into AD Pop with the place. Just hours before they run out of pay, the AD Pop is back open, and the beats are back on the gold. Voila, we should be in business. This year we're aiming for 5,000 ounces. You know, we only got so much time to do it. King of the Klondike, Tony Beats, is betting his season on two big cuts on Paradise Hill. So far, they've delivered 828 ounces. There's still a couple of places that may be a foot of dirt on it. They scoop it up, put it in the sluice box, get rid of it. I'm going to sluice the roots, I'm going to sluice the willows, I'm going to sluice the dirt, and put it in there. Lisa or James, Lisa or James. 
Go ahead, Tony. I need at least two trucks over here. Let's get this bit of pay out of this cup here. I mean, you can only do so much screwing around. At one point, you know what? Just bite the bullet, so to speak. I mean, the Trommel really don't care. I'll take a chance on that. Fire on the Trommel. Let's see what we got. Cool. Firing it up. I'm grouchy. <laughs> Tony has tasked Eric E. Jolia with clearing waste tailings to stop them building up at the end of the trommel. Right now, tailing is Pining up very fast, so I'm trying my best to go as fast as possible, not hit anything, especially not the trommel. Oh, f like, uh, I'm oh, f looks like, like nothing is moving anymore. My. Excavator arm, it's stuck. Uh, oh, it's really not the best time because now tailing are piling up and I'm completely stuck. Uh, Mike, Mike, do you copy Mike? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what's going on. My excavator kind of stopped working and tailing are piling up. I don't really know what to do. Maybe someone have a look. Looks like um, hydraulic oil pissing out of the 460. I shot down a plant. Mike D. Gobby, Michael Beats D. Gobby. Yeah, go ahead. Why is the plant down? Our excavator broke down. And we shot the plant down for that. You got to be kidding me. What are you? I'm at the plant. We have a problem. I'll deal with it. Okay, I'm on my way down there. Do me a favor. Get out of my face and leave this. Leave. Why bother? I get gassed up every time. Every single time. Kevin, do you copy? Kevin, do you copy? Can you get over there and fix this? like to say one little thing can bring down an entire machine and like if it's in the bad spot they can take down the entire operation yeah. with the 460 down the way it's down there is currently the trommel two excavators and the rock truck all held up to the leak so ah. okay where are you all coming from oh possibly this one right here it looks to be an O-ring, so I gotta pull this line off and investigate. Something's missing. Not a O-ring. Measuring just one and a half inches in diameter, the O-ring seals the pipe, feeding hydraulic fluid to the excavator arm. Let's see. If this tiny rubber ring is broken, hydraulic fluid leaks, causing a loss in pressure paralyzing the boom. Uh, fire it up. Let's see what she does. Oh, she leans. Beautiful. And Miss Megan, firing up.
folks might think, what, well, it's just a bit of oil. But one little O-ring probably costs us a couple grand. Hi, guys. Hey, everybody. Hey. hey, guys. After a week of frozen ground and shutdowns in the swallow cut, Tony Beats is eager to see if his piggy bank will pay out. So I'm sure you noticed there's not a lot of gold. I mean, we were down for a bit this week. How much is a bit? Well, it must have been quite a bit. We should wait a bit. Hey, pour it in, though, let's see what we got. To stay on course for their 5,000 ounce goal, Tony needs his piggy bank to provide 260 ounces. Ready? Let's do this thing. Chicken wings. Ten. Nine. Forty, sixty, seventy, seventy-eight point seven. That is dead silence. No wonder if you get that much, I guess. Oh. That's all we got out of it, and I guess we're not going back there now, are we? No. But uh, not impressive at all, but mm. you have those days too, I guess. Yeah. You know, you can't appreciate the good days unless you have a bad day too. Oh, oh okay, yeah, yeah, listen to that. A lot of folks would be really happy to have that amount. I mean, half dirt, half pay dirt. I mean, what do you expect to, right? This is not gonna do it. So we'll go back out there and see what we can do to Mike. Bye, guys. Bye. On the end of the day, it'll come out okay. As long as we gather 5,000 ounces, if we don't give a where it comes from. Well, only 4,100 or so to go. Well, that's all right. But I mean, like you say, as long as on the end it evens out, it don't really matter, right? Sure. I'll better get out there, I guess. Bye. Bye. We leased out some ground to the Winchester boys. They're doing the hunker cut. They have a 200 ounce goal. Pick up some royalties from there. So that'll be pretty nice. I haven't seen him for a while. Hopefully they're sluicing away. The more sluicing they do, the more money we make. The Winchester crew are mining the hunker cut with a skeleton crew of three. For a small group, I think we're, you know, we're holding our own. I think generally we've been working pretty well together. Construction worker and mine boss Jason Fraser is hoping to strike it rich. Well, this is our first season in Dawson, and we're uh, going to strive to do the best we can. Alongside retired business owner John Van Tyle. Gold, it's a dream. I take the, the risk. I go all in. And ex-logger, Butch Bouchard. Yeah, I quit my job. I had a good living normally. When I'm logging, I do good money. But I'm here on the Cursed Cut. The Cursed Cut's reputation is legendary after a series of mining failures. What just happened? The dollar just exploded. The ground has been untouched since the Beats family left it last season. Until now. They call it the curse, God. I don't believe in curses. Sand, sand. What's going on? Oh, uh, we're packing, John. So we pulled those mats and... How many yards is this? Uh, 400 is about tops. 400 and we get up like this. Sand, this sand. Is... Black sand is packing these in like cement. The problem with moving material faster is that it's harder to catch gold. See, there's gold here down low in the box. Every 400 yards of pay run through the Winchester plant leaves the riffles clogged up with black sand, stopping the gold from settling and allowing it to wash off the end of the sluice box. It sucks to be having to do cleanups and, yeah. and knocks your production right down at the stage of the game. Um, you know, we should be able to run for a couple of days before we've got to clean these boxes. Yeah. Now we're getting, you know, a matter of hours out of them, so it's just a kick in the, the guts. We got to figure something out. I think it's enough's enough. The Winchesters won't make their 200 ounce season target unless wash plant designer John can find a quick fix. So, how is this loosen going? Uh, the, box, the box is sanding up. 
Well, there's an amazing amount of black sand in it, yeah. Holy smoke. And the black sand, the gold climbs on top. We're washing it out the end. We got gold at the end rip. Four, 500 yards, and we got to clean up. Get hydraulic riffles in there. Try that out. Tony's suggestion is to replace the expanded metal riffles that keep getting blocked up with black sand with hydraulic riffles. These use jets of water to agitate the concentrate, sending the useless black sand out while still allowing the precious gold to settle in the riffles. Rip the ones out that I have and copy that. That'd be easy. Yeah. Get some square tubing. Yeah. And then they... Uh, Cut them in three-quarter inch strips. Whatever. There's the day to build them. Yeah. It won't take long. That's what you do. You will find one heck of an improvement. Yeah. Yep. People that have done it for 30, 40 years give you advice. You can't say, well, I don't think he knows what he's talking about. But we're taking it and running with it. Following Tony's design, John uses three-quarter inch tubing and steel plates to weld a hydraulic riffle frame together. Good. Awesome, they look good, eh? They fit yeah. great. Yeah. Give it some water. See what the water does. Throw some dirt in it and see what happens. Yeah. We're going to get at it. We're going to start running some material through, and we'll go from there. Two hours from now, we'll know if they work or they don't. The Winchester crew run 100 yards of pay to see if Tony's idea has saved their season. I'll set the feeder down and go and get the plant. Okay. Looks like they're working. They're working real well. They're working real well. A nice riffle action here. No gold on top. And gold will be at the bottom. It gives us more run time. More run time is more gold. Mm -hmm. I like it. Perfect. Good job, John. Bless you. Water back up and uh, wash some more dirt. Tony's fix has worked. With these hydraulic riffles, we'll be able to run 1,200 yards instead of three to 400. And that means less downtime for cleanup, more gold at the end, and that'll be the best thing for us. How's the riffles working out for you guys? They worked very well. Yeah? You got on a bit longer, though? Yeah, a little, about every 800 to 1,000 yards. We have to do a cleanup. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that, no. No. Yeah, since we, we got the rock truck from, from you guys, makes life easier. That's good, though. That's good. Yep. Makes his mood better. Oh. Always in a good mood. <laughs> OK, well, that's good. The Winchester crew's last gold way delivered only six ounces of gold. Butch. Do you want to do it, Butch? Hey, man, pour her in there. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 33, 37, and 41.20. Sweet. That's not bad. So that's good. That's pretty good, guys. Pretty good. It's a fifth of their season goal worth $70,000. It's that, you know, the 200, 200 ounce gold is still still way out there. Well, yeah. We'll, we'll get it. We're working toward it. I think you guys are doing OK. A win-win for everybody. As long as I get a little bit more than you, then everything is good. I'm happy for you guys. King of the Klondike, Tony Beats, has gambled his season on a high-stakes treasure hunt at Paradise Hill. 
The fabled White Channel pay runs through the claim, and if he can stay on it, he could be in for a big payday. What we are going to do is, because it's never good just to have one cut and have all your eggs in one basket. If we have two cuts, our chances for the 5,000 ounces, you know, are just double right there. In the nine-acre cold cut, Tony's crew have already stripped almost half of the cut down to pay. 100 yards to the north, Tony wants to open up the six-acre blue cut to double his chances. But to reach the White Channel goal, his crew must first dig through 100 feet of overburden. Tony wants his oldest son, Mike, to get it done in just six days. I took a breath to try to talk while I was drinking. Didn't work quite so well. <laughs> you dink. We're throwing everything we can to get all this dirt moved before it comes up too much of a pain in the ass to move the trucks, and we're going to end up having to do more expensive around. We're going to have to hurry up with everything to stay ahead of the truck trucks and excavators. Mike beats and cousin Mike rip and pile up worthless non-gold bearing earth known as overburden with two dozers. Excavators then load the rock trucks that haul the dirt out to the dump sites. Move, man. Go. <laughs> You're way too close to me. There's always the beginning of the year hiccups. That always happens. Um, you know, if it didn't happen, I mean, it wouldn't be gold mining. Oh, What's going on here? Mike, me copy. What's wrong with them? that dozer? I've got a leak. Oh, me. Kevin, do you copy Kevin? Go for Kevin. Hey, Kevin, the D10L is leaking, so I'm going to send him down to the lower yard. You want mind checking it out for me, please? Be right on my way. OK, thank you. We really can't do this right now. We just need to get this thing fixed as fast as possible and then start ripping again. Mike continues in the D11, but without the D10's ripping power, he has no chance of getting down to pay by the end of the week. The D10 down, I have a lot less ability to get stuff done as fast as I want. Very, 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 very problematic. It's a pain in the ass having only one cat to rip. Trusted by his dad to run the claim, Mike Beats is down a dozer. Without it, he has no hope of getting down to pay in the blue cut by the end of the week. Hopefully, my brother will fix it. The D10 gets it done quick, so I can get that dozer back in here to give me a hand, finish all this ripping. Because I am somewhat falling behind on that. Something's up with the 10L, so I'm going to go check in with Cousin Mike and see what it is. Watch your break. Cylinder here. I looked behind me and I saw oil stripping out really quick. Inside the cylinder, the rod piece coming out, there's a seal around that. And that is, well, it looks like I'm stuck doing a cylinder swap. And of course, this happens at the best time where, you know, we really need it. So we got to get this machine, the D10L, back up and running ASAP. So I go sign so I can find a cylinder or two. Like, if one thing we're good at, it's making work with what we got. She's in? Okay. Well, let me put the lines on. Well, so I'm going to get my out the way, so to speak. Mike's going to lift the ripper up, put it back and forth, force the air out, see if it's going to fail on us or not. 
and we'll go from there. This is the moment of truth. Let's see what she does. Whole thing all the way up. Just putting it under a bit of load. It's not going to one side, which is good. Both sides look to be activating. No, it all looks good. How's that going? Got it in. Hopefully this one stands up, huh? Oh, yeah. With the dozer repaired, cousin Mike is back in the game with a fighting chance of getting the blue cut down to pay by the end of the week. All this time the dozer was down, Mike was by himself in the cut with the D11. We really need two dozer in there to do ripping. Yeah, he'll be happy on back. <laughs> what? Hi, baby. Hey, guys. Hola, everybody. Hello. The Beats family gather to find out if Tony's hunt for the elusive White Channel gold has paid off this week. How did we do this week? Oh, not too bad. It's least seven days, more or less. I think we did okay. Ran pretty steady. I mean, we got that gold out of the cold cut, and then we reached pay in the blue cut, so we're pretty much ready to roll and keep on going, isn't it? Anyway, uh, we produce some gold that looks good. I suggest we should weigh some up and see what we've got. Everybody ready? Yep. Ready. And go. Tony needs at least 200 ounces a week to reach his season goal. 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 202. Point three. Worth over three hundred and sixty thousand dollars. And of that's not bad for the second way, and I mean for top gravels, because yeah. I'm gonna have enough troubles to keep that trommel running, with both cuts being frozen. So they're big enough. So hopefully by working back and forth, we can keep on running pretty soon, 24 hours a day, because five thousand ounces is a little ways away. I would wrap it up and get back out there, so I can think of ways to spend it. How's that? No. Oh. Bye, guys. The Beats feeder pond is located downhill from the cuts. A pump next to the pond sends water through the half-mile-long pipeline that travels under a new dike road and up Paradise Hill to the wash plant. Using a bypass valve at the plant, Kevin will divert some of the water to the monitor. You got that one? Okay, perfect. Get fired up the water, fired up the pump. Let's see what's gonna happen. This is working pretty good. All the can flow in there. If you got patience, that'd be the cheapest way to do it. And then you'll be awfully surprised at how much dirt you can move in a day. What the f is that? Oh, there he is. Nicholas, get up here. This leaks, he gets cold. I didn't become 65 years old to stand on the monitor. So I'm going to get an employee to do this. Okay, you see what I do? Yeah, and then it moves. Yeah. Okay, because I got to go. Have a nice day. I don't think there's a whole lot that you can mess up here. It's really just spraying a bunch of water at the side of the hill. You can't really mess up too bad other than letting it go. Why the f am I out of pressure? I wonder what the f going on. I need to talk to Tony. Tony, you copy Tony? I just lost all pressure up at the monitor. Something's wrong. What the f thing? We gotta go figure out whether we got a leak or what's happening. 
Hey, Tony, do you have a coffee, Tony? I am losing water pressure here at the plant. Gavin Lee, Gabby, Gavin Lee, Gabby. Go shut the plant down, and I'll go check it out, OK? Here we go again. I mean, I mean, the water has been fine all season, but no sooner you do something new, something has got out. Better go figure out what the f is happening. You got to be kidding me. All this clean water here coming out of the dike. So there we are, we have a leak. Mike D. Copy, Mike D. Copy, come down to the dike, would you? We got a hole in the pipeline. Put this pipe in oh, 30 years ago, but like with all the heavy traffic on it, we must have squished the pipe over a little bit, maybe. Have a look, gentlemen. That's a big leak, too, because if, if it's pushing the dirt away like that. The cracked pipe has derailed Tony's plans to monitor and shut down his entire operation. Right now, everybody standing around, no monitor running, no sluice box running. I think what we should do is we should take yeah. it out. Hopefully, it'll be a quick fix, because otherwise, good cop a lot of money. OK. OK. Good. Let's do it, guys. Oh, there's the pipe. Stay the away from that pipe, OK? Yeah. We'll put Nick on that with a shovel. You found it? You see that part that looks like a crack? Yeah, it looks like a big crack. It's cracked. Well, that's quite a crack. What is the battle plan for this? Oh, it. Kevin can weld it. Weld it without taking it off? Yeah. Now you got to fill a half inch gap and make it watertight. Might as well by just taking the thing apart. No. You have no idea how lucky we are. If we're going to have to take that off, yeah. we'll be digging to the pump and we'll be digging to the other end. So, piece of cake. This all we gotta do is weld up the crack. The rubber? The rubber don't give a We just go do short pieces. Are you sure on that? Yeah. Okay, I don't have the patience. Give me welding rod weld it anyway. Get wires up here, get a pallet up here. I don't give a for working with them kids. Tell you the I'm glad I don't feel like them. I mean, Kevin wakes up, he looks like a corpse. Mike, he moves around like whatever. And then Mike over there, well, he's awake, but we don't know. It seems to be I'm the only one here at 65 that's full of piss and vinegar. I mean, I hardly have enough patience just to stand there and wait for them, to be honest with you. Tony, we'll have the final say on how it's done, because end of the day, it is his show. But doesn't mean I can't argue for something a little more reasonable. Give me the OK, I need a pail. Mike, see if you get a pail. Dad! Damn it, I missed! <laughs> Close your eyes. Yep. I think the last I should have put a better weld on it. But I think he's dead, so no use complaining. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, just fire it up, see what's going to happen, man. That pipe is getting cold, so we got the water. That's encouraging so far. Dry as a bone, now it's all good. Bingo, this will be just fine what they call having confidence in your work. Brody must fill in the hole. Start sluicing. Uh, so it's looking like the water pressure has come back up, and we are good to go. With the water finally back to full pressure, Megan continues to feed the plant with 80 pup pay and the monitor opens more ground on Paradise Hill. The wall of dirt and gravel that you look at right now, you see that shiny piece there on the top? There is a 10-foot layer of ice straight across. This is frozen solid, it's hard. So we get nothing for tar. 
Despite running the monitor for two days, Tony Beats hasn't been able to open up more white channel pay. This here uh, is not a complete waste of effort. We got a very good start in for next season on its own. You know what? It was still a win-win situation. Say hi, Mike. Hi. Beep, beep. Ah! <laughs> for the rest of the season, Tony will have to rely solely on the 80 pup to reach his season goal of 5,000 ounces. You see a lot of new faces in town. Everybody wants to go mining, and 99.9% .9 of them are full of For these guys in the curse cut, they have a lot of pressure on them. There is definitely gold in the ground, so there better be some decent gold in the box, as otherwise they get out of there. The Winchester boys are racing to get their wash plant up and running to prove to Tony that they can catch gold and deliver his 30% royalties. We're gonna go uh, start the excavator and put Winchester in place. I'm getting excited right now. We're getting closer. You see that gold collar in that Zeus box. It's a dream come true for me, I tell you that right now. I'm not using a chain on Winchester. I don't want to mark the paint up. Try to keep her as nice as we can for now. OK, Butch. Can see John. John is the guy who built Winchester, eh? Every time we start to move the plan, John start to be a little bit stressed. But it's normal. All right, stick with the conveyor, Jason. I want her another foot and a half this way. OK. Butch, tighten the trap. Oh, no. Butch! Holy Sorry, I had it, but the strap come loose. He caught it before it went over. Good there, John? They were good. A little stressful, but we're good. Now that the plant is placed safely on the pad, all they need to do is connect the sluice boxes, and they're ready to run pay. Is that gonna go on in there? I hope so. Um. Hmm. Leg is in the way, I see, because of the angle. In my driveway, I set everything to fit on the other side. I thought it was the same. Okay, well, that's not gonna work. Ah. It's always something. John's homemade plant is a unique dual barrel trommel. Paved from the feed conveyor is split evenly between both. High pressure jets clean the rocks as they spin in the trommels. Gold rich slurry then runs out the two chutes into the sluice boxes. When it was built, the sluice boxes were attached to the right side of the plant. Now, the tailings conveyor setup means they need to be on the left, but a supporting leg makes that impossible. To fix, John needs to build an extension to the diversion chute, allowing it to get round the leg and direct pay dirt to the sluice boxes. You can build it yourself. You don't have to pay somebody else to do the work. I'm building it the way we want it. It's on site, and it gets it done today. You know, we're a tiny crew, we're three people. Time is money like everybody, but maybe more so when you're small. You look at the beats operation, they can call in a service truck or a mechanic, and for us, it stops until we fix it. My dad was a tool and die maker. He taught me how to do it. Once I see it, I can pretty much do it for myself. All done welding. We're going to put it on the plant, get ready to mine some gold out of Winchester. Hook that little island on. OK, she's good. Looks like it's gonna work okay. Well, now we gotta get dirt to the plant, and get gold out of the sluice box. After a 12 hour delay, the Winchesters are finally ready to run pay. Let's have a look at the plant because that's where the magic is gonna happen. And that's Winchester. Hopefully it'll do the trick, huh? So not sluicing yet. 
everything lined up, ready to go. It doesn't matter what you build, it don't matter what the you do, the gold don't care. Run it, try it, get lots of it, so I get lots of it. Let's go exclusive, guys. Power her up. First scoop of pay dirt. We don't know what we're going to find in that ground here. If you don't risk, you're never going to know. Winchester, here we go. Clean gravel going out onto the tailings conveyor. Yeah, really exciting now. Now we got something to be excited over. They call this a curse cut, but if you believe in curses, then you're beat already. Everything looks perfect. Feeling pretty good. Soon we're going to do that 20 hours a day. Looks like all of the calculations kind of worked out. The water's flowing, it's beautiful. The boxes are behaving properly. Hopefully it'll work out for them. Pretty determined them If everybody can make money, then you can do business. Two days after firing up, it's time to see if the Winchester boys have broken the curse and delivered gold. Well, guys. <laughs> You got the loot, do you? I got the loot. <laughs> so how many hours did you sluice 24? We ran for 25 hours straight. And... Fine, 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 huh? Yeah. yeah. Gives you some faith in the box. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Nice on the end of the day to see a little bit of gold. In oh, there. yeah. Tony's hoping the 25-hour run will deliver seven ounces of gold. So somebody want to do some counting? One ounce, two ounce, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, five and a half. 6.125 ounces. Six ounces and 25 hours. Well, that's pretty good, guys. Worth more than $11,000, a strong start to the Winchester's first season in the Yukon. That's so bad, eh? A little bit of top stuff. Pretty encouraging to go after the rest of it, isn't it? Yeah, that's awesome. Absolutely. Some of is that, put it in the yards. Pushing just about half an ounce iron. That's about as much as I get on the hill. Really? Those top gravels would have been lean anyway because they've been washed out for the last few years. We can do a little better on the yardage recovery yep. than we're definitely in the game. Good, well, Monica, I seen it. We made some money today. Right. Well, you did. Okay. <laughs> Gold on tire. He says. <laughs> now he perks up. <laughs> Gentlemen, I would say that Thanks. was good. Nice good to luck. See you again. Yeah. Thanks, good luck. Yeah. I never see gold like that. <laughs> I would see six arms in a jar. It's kind of <laughs> need to go back to work to have more gold. You know, it's uh, yeah, that's a gold fever thing. Maybe I don't know. Each cut that we take should progress to more and more gold the deeper we go. So, and hopefully Winchester's up for the task. We are. 27-year-old Parker Schnabel is on an all-out gold blitz. In the Yukon, he's attempting to mine more ground than ever before. And 300 miles west in Alaska, he's going to open a new claim that holds the key to his mining future. To help him survive his toughest season yet, Parker's called in an old friend. So Parker has asked me to come over all the way from Australia to help him with his new Alaskan operation, which is not quite ready to go yet. So in the meantime, he needs me to come over and help him here on the Indian River on his Yukon claim. Yeah, I feel like a little bit of a fish out of water just because I'm not used to this style of mining or this style of gold. So this is going to be a huge learning curve for me. Yeah, I think Tyre will do fine. Now, the biggest thing is just having some comfort with the people that are here to work and give it everything they've got. And we've got that in the crew, and Tyler's that way, so she'll fit in. Tyler just threw me straight in the deep end. I cannot believe I survived that week. Tyler Mani has flown from Australia to help on the Schnabel crew. And over the past week, she's had a crash course in rock truck operating. I'm feeling so much more confident. I did not think I was going to make it at the start of the week, but I feel like I'm finally getting it. 
With his crew stretched attempting to mine out 90 acres before his water license expires at the end of the season, Parker needs recruits who can multitask. I'm just getting a little too sore for this right now. Even veteran gold room expert Chris Dumit is back in a loader. Hey, you know, we got Tyler here now. It looks like she's got a really good handle on the truck. So I may just see if she's ready to step up to a loader. Hey there, young lady. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. You got the rock truck figured out, eh? Got my head wrapped around it. Yeah. It took me a couple of days, but I'm feeling confident in it now. Good, good. Yep. Well, you ready to take the next step then, huh? Yes, I am. Do you mind giving yeah. me a quick rundown? Yeah. All righty. Yep. Drop the arm. This is the hydraulics. Yep. Okay. Left, right. Here's your forward and reverse. Oh, uh, OK. Just take a buzz around. Don't overthink it. OK, I'll try and keep calm. I'm a bit nervous. You know, you let them make mistakes. That's how they learn. You just hope nobody gets hurt. Never driven a load like this before, but it's not too different. Over here. We're over here. <laughs> and then I remember I'm using these bloody hydraulics. OK, Tyler, why don't you uh, go grab a load of pay, and we'll walk you up that ramp. Make sure that you can do that comfortably. That's going to be the scary part. The thing I need to make sure I nail is getting a full bucket, because that's very embarrassing if I don't do that. Go wide and line up straight. Hell. That is a steep ramp. Um, you're going to start out looking over the top of the bucket, and then you're going to start looking under the bucket, so you have to raise it as you go. I'm just going to take this so slow. Oh, my this is steep. If I roll this loader, oh, my A little bit closer, a little bit closer. Well done, young lady. All right, so I'll keep going and you're going to head back to the gold room? Yeah, I'm going to run down there and uh, if you get in a pickle, call. Don't, don't try to push through it, OK? OK, I will. Thank you so much, Chris. Thanks, kiddo. I'm nervous. I don't feel super comfortable at the moment. Parker's flown me out from Australia to help, and this is what they need help with right now. So even if I'm nervous, I just got to get over it and get on with it. And hopefully, I don't up. Hang on. That doesn't look right. There's a build up in the pre wash. Tyson, do you have a copy? Tyson? Hey, there's a huge build up in the pre wash. I don't know what to do. I'll get it. Big rocks like these slip through our grizzly bars and they plug up the pre-wash. At the airstrip, Big Red Shaker Deck is shut down after a pileup in the pre-wash. Big Red's pre-wash is so small, it takes a couple of those for a jam up to happen like that. So something the guy has to keep an eye on. The pileup is small, so Tyson can simply leave the pre-wash jets running to flush out the blockage. With the dirt cleared, Tyson fires up the shaker deck. Here we go. Tyler did a really good job of catching the pre-wash plugging up. We have a matter of seconds until the pre-wash is pretty much buried, Big Red's buried, and didn't even have to break out a shovel. Good save, Tyler. It definitely saved the day. That's what we need to do around here, have eyes everywhere. Good job. All right, Chris, how do we do? I'm going to pour it. You call it out, OK? OK, cool. The keyhole cut has averaged 175 ounces a week. 70. 
185, 200, oh my, 200 exactly. Well, that's because that's only part of it. Here is part B. That looks heavy, doom it. Still hold it's on heavy. pretty tight. 100, 200, 210, 240, 248.95. 448.95. Yeah. A season's best, worth over $800,000. It gives us a season of 974.6, almost 1,000 ounces. Not bad, almost double in our season total in a week. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to see what'll happen once we get two plants going, if this is what we're pulling in with one. We obviously hit some good ground. Indian River is hot and cold, right? And we may have hit a hot spot. Let's hope it holds out. All righty, catch you Keep later. Keep it going, you guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. See ya. Yeah, we smashed it, and the gold proves that. So very good all round. Yeah, it's really nice to have Tyler here. You know, she's like a good friend, and she takes her jobs very seriously. And I trust her a lot. Mine boss Fred Lewis is struggling to figure out how things have gone so wrong. With just weeks left of the season, he's only pulled in 118 ounces, well short of his 500 ounce goal. Winter's coming way faster than we had hoped and uh, we're in a crunch for time. It's just not going as planned. In order to make this work, we're gonna have to push every second of every day. We've got to get enough gold to at least pay for all these bills to keep us going next season and to pad the guy's pockets. Because no one's going to come back if they're not getting gold. To make his season a success, Fred needs at least 60 ounces of gold a week. But plagued by faulty equipment and shutdowns, he's averaging just 15. In a desperate bid to up his gold, He's calling in a favor from one of the Klondike's big guns. I just got a call from Parker. He's passing by our mine site on his way to his Alaska claims. I asked him to come and check out the operation. So I've been splitting my time between the Yukon and Alaska, more in Alaska than here. The traveling is getting to me. You know, I've been back and forth like a yo-yo. Here in Alaska, we've sunk a lot of money into it, and I don't know how I feel about it. The ground is difficult. I'm just having a lot of problems. Fred's mine site here is just on the way between Fairbanks and Dawson, and he asked me to pop in and said he needed some advice on something. Good to see what he needs and see what's going on. The last time I saw him, he pretty much told me to go myself, but it's always good to get a guy like that's opinion. He, he knows a lot about mining, and uh, you never know what he can see. How's it going? Good, how you doing? Good to see you. Glad you came in. Well, this is it, man. Like, the big thing for us right now is we're kind of chasing this quartz vein. I, it's funny, actually. From Papua New Guinea, remember how we saw him pounding with the pipe and the uh-huh. I actually built one of those to test the quartz, because I was like, I'm not going to chase quartz if there's no gold in it. And there were some flakes. Huh. Gold seems to be better on that line. Off to the sides, it's kind of like, eh, 0.5, 0 0.4. The biggest we've what had. What do you mean 0.5 or 0.5? 0.5 ounces per 100, half oh. an ounce a 100. So what do, what do you need help with? What's, the, what, what's your issue? Biggest thing is my wash plant. If we don't feed it exactly right, it doesn't work right, and I don't what know do you if it's... mean it doesn't like If they work overfeed right. the wash plant half a scoop. What happens? It overflows the, the sluice boxes right away. So we're just stuck basically feeding one bucket every two minutes. So what is that, like a one and a half yard bucket? Two. Well, it's supposed to be a two. And we're barely getting any gold at all on the bottoms. Hmm. If you had to pull the rock like that out of your sluice box, like, you've got a tiny little flake of gold fighting a rock that size. OK. Nothing's coming off your top deck. There's no 
point to having it, really, is there? Well, depends. There's huge gap. That gap right there, yeah. Screen keeps sliding down. We even tried welding them together. They keep breaking. Big part broke off right here. How long have you been running like that? The whole season. All year. We're in scramble mode now. Just trying to make it last the rest of the season. Did you only get one set of screens? Yeah. For the whole season? Yeah. OK. Well, that's a up, Fred. Well, I'm learning now. That's, that's why you're here. I, I, You know, I didn't think it would wear out this fast. We've gone through 100 grand worth of screens this summer. Whew. OK. Three weeks ago, it's got a lot of large material going down the sluice run. Parker's crew discovered the same problem on their plant, Big Red. Now we've got a bad screen here. Normally, shaker deck screens separate large rocks from the finer, gold-rich material. But when worn away through months of running, the large rocks fall down into the sluice runs, where they block the flow of water preventing the riffles from catching gold and sending it off the end of the sluice runs. Now Fred's plant is losing gold, too. Do you think it's worth looking for new screens this late in the season? No, you won't get them in time. I'm trying to think of what you can do now. We don't have anything that'll fit. I honestly didn't know. I didn't know screens were out that fast. I, I don't know why I didn't know it, but I didn't. I need to look into finding a way to get new screens. I'd like to get a chance to come out and visit you, but I don't think I, I don't think I can leave. Yeah, no, you don't have time for that. <laughs> You're very busy. All right, I gotta run. Yeah, dude. Thanks for coming, nice man. Yeah, no worries. Really nice you. Take care. You too. It's really, really easy to go and pick apart somebody's operation. Um, you know, there was some points in the last couple months where if you showed up in Fairbanks at our mine site, you could be like, holy these guys have no clue what they're doing. He's out here trying to do it. I guess that's worth something. But anyways, like, your whole season revolves around your plant, right? Like, you've got to take care of it. And that's, like, they haven't taken care of their plant. Fred's going to be in a tough spot for the rest of the year. You know, it's, it's hard as a gold miner hearing from another gold miner that you're up. But at the same time, if you don't learn from those mistakes and fix them, you're always going to be a gold miner. The screens are and absolutely ridiculous. It's something we've got to fix. Shut it down. Fred can't afford to keep running with the wash plant losing gold. So once again, shuts down. Buzz! Yeah. You just missed Parker. He was talking about the plant and showing me the problems. He said our screen's yeah. And that's what's causing us pretty much all the problems. Buzz Legault built Sergeant Sluice with Fred in his yard at the start of the season. Hey, yeah, I got a piece of in my home, man. Kind of rough, wore out, bent up. That's what hopefully they'll do. OK. Buzz. This place sucks. Yeah. With the rock truck, that just puts a nail right in the coffin. Yeah. At California Creek, Fred Lewis's only rock truck is down. Unable to truck pay to the plant, his operation is at a standstill. 
We've got this ground in front of us with gray gold in it, and we can't keep equipment going to mine it. Look at that wash plan. What do we design it for? What do we put underneath it? You're talking about skids. Exactly. You will all still worry about rock trucking the gold to the plant. Why don't we take the plant to the gold? Right now we got a whole ton of pay up there that we can push up with the dozer. I mean, that's massive. That's a big move. With no other options, Buzz wants to drag the 14-ton wash plant along narrow, winding dirt roads 1,500 feet to a new pad in the middle of the Freedom Cut. To keep it fed, they'll use their dozer to push pay dirt directly up to the plant. JB, Stuart, come on over. All right. With no rock truck, Buzz and I had a talk. We're going to do something drastic. We're going to Freedom Cut. Oh, yeah. Sounds good. All right. We make it happen? I actually feel good about this. This makes me feel good. It's a big move. It's a lot of work, guys. Buzz will be calling the shots. Cool. OK, let's make this happen. All right, guys. Come on back. Oh, oh, come on, Oak. All right, let's try again. So, JV, realistically speaking, this is the sergeant's first marching orders, eh? Yeah, no lie. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, she's moving fine. The sketchier parts of this trek of the gauge Buzz has hit a steep downhill hairpin bend with a 20-foot drop into the creek. One thing you definitely don't want is a runaway wash plant. Realistically, the Sarge could do his basic maneuvers a lot better. <laughs> Fred Lewis is making a bold move to save his season. Come around that sketchy corner, you know. To, oh, yeah. We would have probably, yeah, yeah. Unable to truck pay dirt to the wash plant, his crew is hauling Sergeant Sluice to a mountain of gold rich pay dirt stockpiled in the freedom cut. Sarge here, if I can handle it well. I'm just about there, eh? Uh, about three more feet or so, probably. Oh, that looks pretty damn good there. Right where it's sitting, man, it looks pretty actually, level right yeah. there. Sarge is in place. yippee ki -yay. Yep, looks good to me. Awesome. <laughs> Having already lost two days of sluicing, Fred and his crew race to get the plant back together, ready to fire up ASAP. All right, this is our last connection. Everything good over there, Buzz? All's is connected, buddy. Hey, Stuart, you ready up there on the excavator? Let's turn and burn. So right now, we're a little bit nervous. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm, there's a big gamble coming up here to the Freedom Cut. Old Sarge is finally home. Yeah, bro. Looks pretty good. Excellent. 
It's perfect. There's no problems at all. With the dozer pushing pay to the plant, Fred's crew are back running freedom cut pay dirt. To make up for lost time, they need it to deliver big. Man, this is, uh, this is really big for us. This mine site is 100% active. We're doing it without rock trucks. We're doing it our way, with our wash plant, with our dozer. It's pretty freaking fantastic. What's up, slacker? At California Creek, it's the moment Fred and his crew have been battling towards. The first gold way from the Freedom Cut. Oh, it's been an eventful two weeks, man. We've been moving, 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 moving. Oh, about time. After just two days of washing pay, Fred needs to see improvement on his season total of just over 18 ounces. All right, who wants to call it out? Buzz. Buzz. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen point five. Worth over $31,000 doubling their season gold haul and proving that the Freedom Cut is some of the best ground they've ever mined. This represents more than we've mined the entire season. So this is two days work. I'd say we're doing better mm -hmm. and we're definitely getting to where we need to be. Yeah. And the gold's coming in. We know the gold's there. So we just need to keep fighting. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm happy about this, guys. We just need to replicate it. Yeah. So let's keep our hard work going. And we might actually pull this off. We want to get this uh, cut down and done well within the next week. All this stuff is nice to work right now that's frozen, but the moment it starts to thaw, it makes it a lot harder and more expensive to work it. The Beats family, led by son Mike, are throwing everything they've got into stripping 700,000 tons of dirt from the cold coat. All in the hope of hitting Paradise Hill's fabled white channel pay in less than a week. If we don't get this cut done in the time allotted, it sucks to be us, we're just gonna have to work harder. Thanks. Go for Kevin. OK, so the cut gate, my truck, uh, loose and broken. Copy. Take that truck back to the yard, please. Main yard, main yard. Ah! I'll be back. Ah. As they churned through the deep overburden, Tony's eldest son and chief mechanic, Kevin Beats, is battling to keep the rock trucks in working order. There are several bolts missing from this machine, which are kind of important. I'm not supposed to do that. Kevin, go for Kevin. Kevin, go for Kevin. Kevin, it's Jeff. Uh, the cop truck is uh, uh, slightly behind the cab. Cool. May as well run to the staging yard as well, then. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's a lot of smoke. Hey, Kevin, copy Kevin. Go for Kevin. Yeah, I just blew her out. up here and then I cut. Give me a minute, I'll hop in a truck. I will be right there. Change your plans. Fails. OK. 
Okay, let's have a look-see. That's not good. Looks like a hose busted. In a matter of hours, a third of Tony's fleet of rock trucks are out of action. What's going on with this? Uh, rad line's busted. We need an O-ring piece, which we don't have in stock. So, uh, truck's down for a bit. How long you figure? With the way shipping's been, probably a couple days. That's no good. I need as many trucks as possible right now. You gonna call Tony, figure out a plan? No. You still have trucks with the Indian, right? I believe so. Only take me a day to slip into the Indian and go grab the truck. So I'll go line that up you know, make sure stuff don't break around here. Yeah, sounds good. No longer needing to check with Tony, Mike decides to leave the cut at a critical time, gambling he can get back before he's missed. Because the more trucks we got, the more production we're getting. As long as that trouble's not spinning, all we're doing is spending money and gaining nothing. I just want to get the job done. On Paradise Hill, the Beats are striving to get on the gold. Expert operator Ruby Mahoney has been digging for 10 straight days, reaching 70 foot down in the cold cut. I'll be over there in a second. Oh, yeah. I think we finally hit pay. Well, that's good. It took us long enough. No kidding. That's definitely pay right there. You can see it all over. That that's... yellowy stuff. Yeah, that's good stuff. It has that nice sound when you drop it, too, the click, 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 click up the rocks. I love that sound. Yep, perfect. Which means we can stitch loosely soon, and we'll have a massive cut to work from. The distinctive iron-stained yellow soil contains rounded riverbed rocks, a good indicator that the ground contains gold. If it is quality pay dirt, it could mean they've struck the massive 60-foot deep white channel pay layer earlier than expected. Tony BC copy, Tony BC copy. You're calling for me? Hey, Dad, we struck pay. Well, let's have a look, I guess. OK. I'll go and do some planning, see what we've got. Tony's test will determine just how profitable his season will be. Let's see how much gold we can get out of the ground. You gotta remember, you gotta get at least an ounce of every hundred, and that's not even that great. In the olden days, they get way more than that. So if we can get an ounce for every hundred, I'm pretty happy. Let me put it this way. If I need my glasses, we're not slushing it. That ain't happening. So there's one lousy piece in there, and that's just about it. He's banking on the cold cut if he's to hit his 5,000 ounce target. That looks pretty good. Nice, fine colors. There's even a couple of flakies in there. That means they're all through the pan. I think I'll sluice that. I'm happy. Nice to see some colors out of the cut. After hitting pay early, Tony could be on for a bigger payout than the king of the Klondike expected. We're going to have to get that trommel going because i like to see some more of this. That is always a bit encouraging that you have the first pan is that good. Then you know you didn't spend all your money in vain, right?
you hate to throw those kind of rocks on your wash plant, but there should be a lot of big gold around those big rocks. So that's what we're hoping for. They'll stop, they'll stop, they'll stop. This conveyor quit, Nate. I'm not sure what's up. The belt conveyor stopped. Did he just say the belt stopped? Oh. Just one big one? Looks like we got a rock in the tail pulley. Keep prying. No, hold okay. on. Okay. We're going to have to loosen the belt. Try to spin that tail pulley in the belt so it'll kick that rock out. Dave has to spin the tail pulley by hand. Keep yeah. loosening? Yeah, you know you're good. Good? Thanks. <laughs> She's moving. There, got her. Man. Okay. So this is the rock that was wedged in there. But the way it was wedged was bound into that belt so much that we couldn't get it to roll or flip to a flat point to get it to come out. Hey, Jason. Yes, sir. Come here. There's some little pieces in there. It sure looks like it, doesn't it? I'll bet that's gold. Now that's gold. Without a doubt, 100%. This rock broke open, and there's a little bit of gold in it. So we're going to hang on to that one. Fire plan up. There's eagle coming on. frustrating. We are really limited on the amount of time that we're going to be here. I need to get gold right now. You know, it's, it's going really, really smooth right now, and that's a scary part. Nothing ever goes smooth in mining. Yeah, bring me some pain, Nate. Oh, Nate. I, uh, can bear quit again. Kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. What? Kill it, kill it, Jason. Piece of The coarse tailings belt has jammed once again. Well, we thought we fixed it, but we didn't fix it. Once again, we got a bunch of rocks in the tailpoint. Dave must now clear the rocks by hand. Rocks coming off conveyors, everybody clear? It, that moved a ton. Let me clear the belt out, Dave. Clear. which is a piece of rubber that keeps flopping open. And the rocks get down, and then they fall into the tail poison. Yeah, it's just wear on the machine. Wears the rubber out. And then what happens is you create a little hole, and the little rocks get in there. Pretty soon it grows. Now you got a problem. When you run a million rocks over rubber, the rock will always win. So right now, we're patching that hole. A rubber flap on the edge of the belt has worn out. Instead of steering rocks up the conveyor, the flaps ripped open, allowing rocks to fall through, jamming the tail pulley. 
To get the eagle back up and running as fast as possible, the team fix a rubber patch across the gap. We're fixed. See if it runs that way. Yeah, you want to go ahead and turn it on? Make sure everything's good? Yeah. Dave's back in the game, but the shutdowns have cost him eight hours in vital sluicing time. Now all he can do is hope this spot pays out. Hey, Shaw. Hi, guys. Tell me it looks great. I was thinking it was going to be a bit more than that. So what do we got on in the box, Nate? About 20 hours on it. 100 yards an hour, there's 2,000 yards right there. Last week, Team Turin ran 1,400 yards, delivering 5.58 ounces. This week, they've mined deeper, hitting bigger rocks, and Dave thinks they should pull in significantly more than their last way. Now let's weigh it up. One, two, three, four, five. There's six. 6.86 ounces. Worth $11,000. Shoot. For sakes. Explain that. Just not a lot of gold. I was hoping for double figures. The way I understand it, and what all the old timers have told me, every time there's a storm, it's depositing gold and this river's flushing it down. So the river continually is depositing gold. I believe that, Dave, but I hate to say it, it's not financially feasible for us to try and wait for it to deposit enough for us to make money off of it. Really, if you look at everything that we have in front of us, you might not be able to sell this for 20 years, Dave. I just don't know this is where I want to be. I really don't. I had said I'd follow Dave to the end. Well, that could be the end. I hate to say it, it's somewhat embarrassing. I do believe there's virgin ground under there. I think we're gonna get a lot better gold down deeper. And we're only at, what, 12 or 15 feet? So that's what we're gonna do. At California Creek, a quarter mile long, 30 foot thick ice sheet blocks Fred Lewis from mining his claim. He's cut a path across the ice to reach vital equipment on the other side of the creek. You know, there's just never a time in my life I see something as impossible. Improbable? Definitely. Impossible? Never. This is just the latest challenge for Fred and Stu, who served on tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. Well, there's multiple times where like, I'll be like, but I've broken both my legs, Fred. You're like, so? <laughs> Well, you know, I took a round of the helmet in Afghanistan and ended up finding out I had a bruise on my brain. The biggest compliment I ever get is when people tell me I don't look disabled. It's also an insult because there is no such thing as a disabled look. That whole stigma of there being no visible disabilities needs to go away. Like, I'm sorry you can't see the bruises on my brain. I'm sorry. I wish there was a sign on my head that said, hey, his brain's bruised. But when I introduced myself before gold mining, I had a really hard time People would say, what do you do? And I would say, I'm a disabled veteran. And that got to the point where that was how I identified myself. Now when people ask me what I do, I say I'm a gold miner. <laughs> After cutting a path through the ice, Fred leads his crew to the six inch pump, which he plans to use to melt the ice holding their claim and pay dirt hostage. We got her. This is like every boy's dream, dude. Man, these things are I'd, heavy. Uh, I'd go two hand. All right, hang on. Ready? Yep. The next stage of the plan, get the pump set and ready to shoot water. All right, I don't trust this chain very well. OK, lifting. I'm going to swing it around. Everybody clear? 
we drop this pump, guys, we are done. I'm going forward. Careful, careful. Oh. All right, Christopher, chalk the wheel behind it. Fred, you're good. Let's get those hoses down there and get them hooked up. Oh. If one of us falls in, we're not coming out. Pick up on it a little bit, Fred. Let's do the intake while we're waiting for the rope. Look out, Christopher. That's deep. We're taking our main pump and we're going to turn it into a fire hose to run water on top of this ice. I thought this was the most dangerous part, but it's really not. I'm going to tie a rope to myself and try and get up over here because our hoses need to be going that way. Not exactly the best place to be, but there's no other way to get up here. So once I have a rope on me, if I fall, they can at least pull me back. Fred, am I clear to back up? Once I get up there, I'm not really concerned because it's about 20 feet thick. But like we're saying the whole time, you look under here, there's some, there's some crevasses, some caves. Could be unsafe. So I'll get a rope tied to me, and hopefully they can pull me back like a fish if I fall. What I'm thinking is we tie one like to you as you go tether, and then somebody kind of go down a little bit. So in case you do go through them, you have one more opportunity to grab a rope before you go in the snow tunnel. If you go underneath, they're going to have to let go of you. Otherwise, they're going to drown you. And you're going to have to shoot out through and then that will be the last chance to grab a hold. Sounds like fun. I'm just saying, yeah. I don't know if the, the snow tunnel looks like it goes through, but we don't know how big it is, so you could very well get stuck under there. Christopher, I'm going to hand you this. You're going to basically feed it to me as I go, because if I fall, there want, you don't want any tension, right? Yeah. Don't keep it tight where you're pulling me, but at the same time, don't give me a lot of lead. Yeah. And I double knotted it, so it's not slipping through fingers. Yeah, that's good. All right. All right, well, hey, Fred, good luck. We'll see we got you. this, we got this. See you on the other side. Kind of feels like right before a halo jump in the military, you, you're all amped up to do it. You can't wait, and then the door opens, and you're like, oh, what am I going to do now? Fred will be tethered to Chris for support. But if Fred falls in and is dragged under the glacier at speed, Chris must release him in the hope his father is flushed quickly out the other side. Put this so you have just this part around. And then you've oh, I got. I wasn't sure if you wanted me to. It's talk. like a break. You got this, and if you have to let go, you just let go. And then there's not an extra tail because if there's a tail, it could catch you and then pull you in. So just use that as your guideline, and then it's going to be a little complicated. Obviously, if you feel a lot of pressure, if, if it starts pulling you, you need to let go of me, right? I don't think it's as dangerous. As Famous last words, Christopher. That's what everybody that died doing anything extreme has said. What's the worst that could happen? Drowning. Hyperthermia. Oh, yeah, this is like your biggest fear. Yes. Drowning. Yes. Love you, son. Fred's first challenge, clear a crevasse that could plunge him straight in the freezing water. Slack. I'm jumping. Chris, you got me? It's a big hole up here. Is there? I think it might be like top melt, but there's a big hole with a bunch of water in it. Go, hole. There we go. I'm just gonna jump onto the bank. It's only like a four foot gap. Hose in place. It's time to see if Fred's desperate plan will work. Fire it up. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. We got water. We got water going all the way down this channel. Right where we want it, actually. It's definitely eaten through the snow already. <laughs> I'm happy you made it. He's safe. 
Fred, it's cutting through right through. No, it's cutting it through. Yeah. It's cutting right through it. It's cutting right through it. Is it really? Already about a foot. First success of the season. That ice kicked that our is, asses. And, uh, I think that's a huge victory, guys. We probably saved ourselves a week of sluicing here. Yeah, I'm uh, excited, man. Keep fighting. Keep pushing, not waiting on our asses, and yeah. uh, we'll be mining before we know it. With his plant from last season no longer available, Fred struck a deal to use local miner and crew member Buzz's home-built wash plant. We're talking about winning over our freedom this season and becoming independent miners and uh, a wash plant's kind of the first step. While the crew continues to hack at the icebound claim, Fred heads off to retrieve the plant from Buzz's home in McQueston, a hundred miles away. You know, the season relies on this thing and I've put a lot of trust in Buzz. We're about to see if that's gonna pay off. Buzz! Hey. Will that thing even run? You know, it doesn't look like a whole lot right now, but me and you, the work that we're gonna do to this thing, man, it's... It's gonna be a It's gonna be the cat's meow. Buzz's plan to bring his wash plant back to life? Step one, build a 12-foot high, 19-foot long steel frame from scratch. Step two, place it on top of a set of skids and weld it together. Step three, drive in a seven-ton shaker deck, position it on top and attach it. Then, finally, step four, maneuver in and place a hopper into position. Once complete, this wash plant at full throttle should be capable of cleaning 90 yards of pay dirt an hour. I don't have a whole lot of welding experience, so. You'll learn as we go. You know, the good thing is, you know, I've got Buzz on the team for this purpose. He's an amazing fabricator and operator. A little slower. It's not that bad looking, though. Fred and Buzz work into the night, fabricating the new frame and skids for the wash plant. Sure, this is gonna hold. This is on it nice though. Yep. Yeah. And it's holding it. <laughs> That's a good sign. <laughs> Nothing fell apart. I'll tell you what, Buzz. It's instead of Freddie and Juan, it's Fred and Buzz. We just did this all by ourselves. It's pretty impressive. But the job's not done yet. They still need to paint the rusty frame and fix up the hopper. So this hopper really is the most important part of the wash plate. It's going to feed all of our feed directly onto our screen. We have to get this done by the end of the week. We've got to get it across the river and up to the claim. Time is of the essence, and we can't have any setbacks. After building a frame for the plant, over the last three days, they painted the rusting shaker deck and built the hopper that will funnel pay into the plant. Ooh. Oh, a little mustard gas. The hopper's done, and it looks fantastic. It's going to be a lot wider than we had last season and a lot longer. What that does is going to give our operators a hell of a lot more ease in feeding the plant, and we're going to get a lot more gold. Ah, the boys are here. 
Cavalry's here. I can't yeah. wait. So we got this trailer loaded up. Oh, uh, yeah. We still got to do the uh, everything. Like we're setting up a fob. Buzz needs to load the trailers without damaging the precious wash plant. Careful, JB. All right, now, look at that. That's perfect. So right now, we're loading up the sluice runs. Once we get the sluice runs done, she's getting ready to go home. Trailers loaded. All right, let's get this show on the road. Fred heads up the convoy with the shaker deck to make the 100-mile return trip back to California Creek. What's wrong? I started driving and something didn't feel right. Says he's having trouble with his trailer. Well, can you explain it? Felt like it was like dragging a little bit. Like freaking oh, spring what is that? Oh, it's like that. Yeah, I swear. Hey. Oh, you kidding me? What? Another one over there, too? Yeah, I someone said, too. JB, tell me you can fix this. The whole leaf spring's broke. Oh, my Yeah, just going to set us back there a little bit. I know Buzz in his junkyard, man. He's got a lot of stuff. He could have a set of springs. All right. Right now, we're trying to source leaf springs, which Buzz may have, actually. Yeah. Uh, for that trailer, for some reason, those leaf springs decided to bust. I think it's all the weight that we've got putting on those they look like they're the same size. If not, we'll make them fit. That's right. All right. Do what you got to do. This isn't going to kill me if it falls, is it? Oh. Get it, Fred. Oh, that was bad. That close, bro. Lucky I'm small. Holy No, it's a lucky that we shot that Otherwise, Fred's dead. That is that close, Fred. That's why you block Holy Fred. Block there. Fred. That close. We had put chalk blocks underneath this just in case something happened. Have we not done that? I probably have them smashed in head right now, but I'm done with this. I just want it to be over. I want to be on the road. Look at that. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> After a three hour delay. Okay, let me just get the tire on, man. And... Are we sure this is going to hold? Oh, yeah. Fred and his crew can finally get on the long road back to California Creek. Let's get the out of Dodge. After a grueling eight hour journey across the Yukon. It's probably the most exhausting day we've had all season. The crew arrive with their wash plant. Behind this truck, is everything we need to install our wash plant on the claim. I want to be running. I want to be sluicing. I want to be weighing gold. Well, I said we needed something bigger. I think we got something bigger. At California Creek, third season mine boss Fred Lewis is taking delivery of a piece of game-changing equipment. This is something guy can smile about that he's gambling will propel him to his 500-ounce goal. Well, I made a decision. I'm going to go all in. We need a big machine that we can rely on, or we're never going to hit that goal. Three quarters of the way in, Fred's season is finally on the upswing. He's banked 111 ounces, more than his entire haul last year. Now, he's investing his slim profits on a lease for a 460 excavator, a 51-ton dirt mover with a five-yard bucket. That deck is huge compared to our other one. Everything about this thing is huge. <laughs> I love it. Man, <laughs> look at all the grease points. <laughs> Holy. Well, our biggest problem right now, the equipment we have, it's not up for the task of what we're trying to make it do. You know, right now, the 250 track system is so up. All it can do is feed our plant, which puts a lot more stress on the 220. Fred's 250 excavator track is bust, leaving it stuck feeding the plant. The smaller 220 
must dig for pay dirt in the freedom cut and clear waste tailings, but it can't keep up, forcing shutdowns. The bigger, more powerful 460 will take over digging pay and keep the pay pile high and the gold coming in. All right, well, it's official. We've upped our game. 460's headed out to the cut, and then hopefully get some pay dug up. Put this pump in action. <laughs> he looks like a little kid in a candy store, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is what mining's all about here in the Yukon. In comparison, our 250, it takes about three and a half minutes to load a 30-ton rock truck. This thing here would probably take a minute and a half. Just like a champion. Hey, Buzz. I'm just actually excited that we got the 460. And finally, we're able to move the amount of dirt that we need to. The plant just needs to run. The 460 excavator fills the rock truck in half the time, doubling the gold-rich pay to the wash plant. This is going to make things happen. It's amazing, you know, what a five-yard bucket will do, bro. We're definitely running circles around the 220. <laughs> It's a big gamble getting it here. We really don't have the money to cover it, but hopefully the work it's going to do is going to pay for that gamble. Oh, great. What the No. Oh, doesn't sound good. Sounds like swinging issues. This sucks. Yeah, JB, man, I got some uh, issues here at the 460. I'm going to need you to come over here and give me a hand so we can assess the situation, see what the hell is wrong with this thing. I'll head right up there in a second. Man, this machine is supposed to be our major game changer. That pisses me off. Break it again! <laughs> it's making noise or something when you're telling me. It's horrible. I need you to jump up there and freaking right. swing it. Okay, All right. check this out. What do you want me to do? Just kind of turn it nice and slow? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just All take right. it easy and freaking. Sounds good. See what it says. If it can't spin, the 460 excavator is useless. Look great. That don't sound good at all. <laughs> no, man. Just, Holy just smoke. Freaking, just swing transmission on the fuel tank side. You can feel, you've narrowed it down which one it was. Yeah, you feel it, man. It's horrible. Wow. The 460 excavator has two swing transmissions. They connect to a ring under the turret to spin it 360 degrees. One transmission has broken. It needs to be hoisted out and a new one slotted in. We know we gotta replace that. Who knows how long we'll have to wait for parts on that. What's up? Why you guys look mopey? It's always one thing or another, isn't it? All right, lay it on me. 460. Swing motor, swing transmission. The transmission is, you can, t you can hear the gears in there. They're grinding and... It's a major. So she's down, down, down. Down, down. We just got it. I know. Swing motor. Swing motor is what uh, helps the turret move. With that down, we can't use it. We can't do anything with it. And that task is way too big of a task for my guys. So I'm gonna have to call a mechanic, which is gonna cost more money. But uh, I feel like we're overcommitted at this point and we gotta bite the bullet, get it fixed. The big problem right now is we're running out of pay, but we're gonna have to shut down. I don't understand how every piece of equipment we get breaks, I swear. This place is cursed. But the thing is, it's not just us. Uh. 
You know, look at our neighbors. Mm -hmm. Dropping left, right, and center. I don't think that's due to a curse, though. That's just how the Claytons are. They just constantly break <laughs> Hey, what's up, Fred? What's up, Hey. How are you doing? Uh, this week, Fred went all in on a 460 excavator to dig deep into what he hopes is gold-rich bedrock. To pay it off, he needs to improve on his 16 ounce a week average. All right, guys. You ready? Drum roll. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven point zero two. Worth $12,000. It brings their season total to 118 ounces but way short of what he needs. Well, yeah. I don't know what to say, guys. I think that's one of our worst goal ways up in the Yukon. That sucks. Honestly, this doesn't pay the fuel we ran last week. Yeah. Last week was pretty much our best goal way, but it isn't going to come out of the ground itself. Third-year mine boss Fred Lewis is finally on a roll. He's banked 37 ounces of gold so far this season, but it's a long way to go before he hits his 500 ounce gold. Fred's crew are on good pay in the Freedom Cut. Last week, they doubled their season gold haul. Now, they must keep up the pace, feeding Sergeant Sluice. So we've got the 250 over at the wash plant pumping pay, but we need the 220 over there it's got to be pulling the overburden and the tailings away at the same time. So without this over there, we really can't run. Oh, are you kidding me? Full D rate. This is not good. Stop beeping. JB, JB, this is Fred. How copy over? Hey, Fred. Hey, I got bad news, bro. The uh, 220 is in full D rate. It won't even uh, rev up or anything. Negative, and it's beeping. It won't shut up. Without that computer, we can't reset code, and it won't do nothing. Watch that. That really right there because um, <clears throat> it's not just a mechanical issue. It's not something we can just put the new part in and go. It's something we absolutely have to have a certified technician to reset the code. In full D-rate mode, the 220 is stuck on low power and can't lift heavy loads. What's up, guys? Oh, please tell me great news. OK, well, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> um, 220 is full derate. What? 220 is in full derate mode. It's not good. What that means is, Christopher, it's a lot to ask, but you're going to basically be stuck in the 250 indefinitely, feeding the wash plant. Guys, we, we got to make this happen. You know, that, that goal we set's pretty aggressive, and we're not going to hit it if we just sit around and wait for things to get fixed. So yeah. let's adapt, overcome. It is what it is. Take, take the kick and move on. The 28-ton 250 excavator must now do the job of two machines. It'll have to feed the plant and clear the tailings. As much as I like being paid and getting gold and all that cool stuff, I hate feeding the plant. This boring ass <laughs> job. 22-year-old Chris Parker became Fred's stepson when he was seven years old. You know, people who think that, like, oh, my you're the, you're the boss's son? Yeah, that must be so nice. No, it sucks. I can get the ax just as much as anyone else can. Oh, what the Hey, Buzz, 
you got a copy? I think I just broke the uh, the pin off the 250 track. So I'll pull my shift. First thing I'm gonna do is fix the track. Yukon local Buzz has already had to fix the track on the 250 once this season. Just popped off. Might be a bit of a hassle, but we'll get it. Pick it up, flip it over. Hopefully get it back on its rocket. Roll it on, tighten it up, get back to work. Yep, like that. Now pushing up. Oh, I came up over the hill hoping to see this wash plant running, and instead I see everybody huddled, huddled around. Other side, keep on going, keep it. Go, go, go. Yeah, come on, come on. Oh. Boom, it's on. This season, Fred's been hit by breakdown after breakdown. Stewart, stop the truck. Gears on his rock truck's wheel imploded. Holy And the bracket on his dozer cracked. There's only about an inch of this piece holding together. What the is up with the 250? Like, uh, I don't know. Christopher's been a little hard on it. Um, do you think that those track pin issues are related to operator error? Do you think Christopher's doing something he shouldn't? It has a, a lot to do with it, yeah. All right. Um, I know it's kind of frustrating. It's not helping us. It's hurting yeah. us pretty bad. Hey, Chris. Um, so this is old equipment. You know that, right? Pretty equipment, but yeah. I, I agree. I agree. I've been talking to JB about it, and the consensus is that we're going to pull you off the pile. Um, we think that you're operating the equipment a little bit too rough up there. How? How am I operating a bit too rough when I'm barely even moving? Well, from I just said that this equipment is garbage. I know you're not going to like it. I'm going to pull you off the pile just to keep it, keep it running. This is pretty ridiculous, in my opinion. I'm not blaming you. What I'm saying is I'm going to pull you out to see if it is you. If the problem stops, it was obviously you. And we'll figure out why, and we'll retrain you on it, and we'll move forward at that point. Don't hit me with the retrain. I'm not trying to insult you. I don't need to, to be retrained. It's, this is sounding pretty insulting. Well, I'm not trying to insult you, Christopher. Right now, the fact of the matter is we need the plant running, and if it's a problem that's caused by an operator, we have to figure out why. All right? Well, that's a pretty decision. I'm done with it. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. Not going to deal with it no more. So we're looking at 2,100 yards this week. Obviously, we had a lot of problems with that damn 250 track. We had to put it up on the mound. And 2,100 yards is what we should be running in a day and a half, not a week. Equipment issues can't be the reason why we're not hitting our goal. We've got we to gotta figure it out. If we have to adapt our mining plan to work around these dead weight pieces of equipment, that's what we're going to have to do. All right, Ray, on that note, you ready to read this bad boy out? One, two. Five. Fred needs to deliver roughly nine ounces of gold a day to hit his 500 ounce target. But this week, he only sluiced a day and a half's worth of pay. There's the nine, oh. 10, 12, 13. 14, 15, 15.5, brother. Hey. Worth over $26,000. It's going? pretty damn good, actually. Yeah. yeah. So if we run 2,100 yards and get 15 ounces off of it and we keep replicating that, we're above our 9 to 10 ounces a day. Easy. Wow. So the goal is there, guys. That's cool. We just got to get our fixed. Yeah. You know, that, that number is nice and all, but I'd rather be seeing 50. Wouldn't we all? And we can do that if you get back to work. I'm off shift, bro. <laughs> I'm going back to bed. Man, let's, go, let's get the <laughs> out of here and make it happen. <laughs> Come on, Samson, you got some digging to do. Let's go. <laughs> With Parker, Tyler, and Mitch gone, he's brought in old boss Mike to help. I wiped for how many years? Now you can wipe mine. <laughs> How heavy is this thing? Oh. Old man noises. Uh, grunting, yes, the <laughs> grunting comes with age. <laughs> don't, don't you worry. You're my eyes. Let's do this. It's the moment of truth now. OK, you got her. Coming away, two inches. Try and go up a little bit. Yeah. Spinning like that. Yeah, just re reposition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bingo, okay. There we go, that'll boy. 
We got Slucifer of the cut, but this is the beginning of the fight. We have to drag it up that massive hill we built. Although we're in a 750, it's still not going to be a breeze. Dragging Slucifer onto the 40-foot pad is the most dangerous part of the move for Tyson and Tupper. 90,000 pounds plus the resistance of dragging it through the dirt. Keep going, keep going. The 750 is just getting dragged back down towards it, and that's how steep this ramp is. So just having to work it, inch by inch, get it up here. Back of your tracks are almost at the pad. You got about six inches off the front. Beautiful. Tyson and Tupper swing in the super stacker, which will feed the plant pay dirt from the new cut when Slucifer is ready. You know, this is a combination of a lot of work that's gone on in the past week here. And we're about to fire Slucifer up. Want to open this valve here? It's looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and fire up the shaker deck. What the f The super stacker, if it's not working. Damn it! There's no power on the screen here. Stand-in mine boss Tyson has successfully moved Slucifer to a new cut, but the super stacker conveyor has lost power. And to make matters worse, his boss Mitch has returned early from a family vacation. What's happening, guys? It's not up and running. The generator shut down. Just got fired up here, and the wash plant was running, and all of a sudden, everything shut down. And our generator here is yeah, not no, running. no power on the display here. You want to grab your voltmeter there and see yeah. what we got on the battery? I'll keep shaping that. OK, sounds good. Strange that we have no power at all to that panel. OK, I think I found the problem. Look at that, man. It's like it was never hardly crimped. Hmm. A loose wire has detached from the alternator cutting power to the super stacker. It must have just been the heat shrink was holding it. We just need to put it back in there and crimp it. That'd be a wild fix, eh? You know, sometimes you get lucky and it's an easy fix. Just Watch gently, yeah. OK. You happy with that crimp? Well, happier than, <laughs> than what it was before. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty crazy you got just a you know, couple dollar fitting there that's uh, bringing the whole operation to a standstill. but. Good thing Parker's in Alaska. Hey, you know what? If this is all of our problems, I'll be very happy. Come on, baby. Oh, yeah, there we go. That looks good. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, oh. Ben. And welcome oh. home. <laughs> yeah, it feels good to be back. It's awesome to see that the guys were able to get Slucifer here on a new wash plant pad. Oh, that's a lot of work there from old Tyson got none on this. You know, I had a great time being home and getting to spend time with my family. But, uh, you know, when it comes to work, man, I love what I do up here. Uh, you know, mining is one of those things that it just gets in your blood. Mitch. Welcome back, oh, man. Thank you. Short-staffed, Tyson has been running Parker's Yukon operation, while foreman Mitch has been visiting home. 
So Slucifer's moved, and we got Big Red still chugging along, finishing up there at the bear cut. And uh, I guess what are we calling this new one? Tupper came up with the payback cut because, you know, when I worked for him over the years, he was pretty hard on me, so <laughs> I rode in pretty hard this time around. <laughs> I like that, the payback cut. Well, I guess the big question, is the payback cut going to pay? Has it got some gold yeah. in it, Chris? Or well, what? there's a little bit in there. We can throw it on the scale and see. You want to do all the right. honors, Mitch? I'll do Big Red. I like that thing, man. You, yeah, that's your baby. Here we go. All man. right, all right. Bring it. 10, 20, 30, 40. 60, 70, 80, 100, 120, 140, 150, 160, 180, 189.5. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Nice. Worth over $320,000. The bear cut keeps delivering. Well done, T. Now it's time to see how Slucifer did, running four days in the new payback cut. Here we go. Here we go. Let's do her. We got 10, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 110, oh, yeah. 130, 140, 144.4. Uh, 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 Worth over $245,000. Looks like the old payback cut is actually paying up quite nicely. It is. It's working out really good. I think Parker would be happy with both those numbers. I mean, uh, yeah. you guys are doing great. Check this out. So for the season, we're at 4,317.25. And last year, we were at 37.68. Wow. So we're ahead of last year by roughly 600 ounces. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Y'all did nice, man. Yeah. I'm stoked. Yeah. Looks good. All right. You got to jump in your excavators and dozers, and I'll go back to cleaning gold, and we'll keep this operation running. Yeah. Let's Keep we'll call you next time we need you out there. <laughs> okay. Catch Thanks, you later. Dude. Later, man. Thanks. Early tests indicate it could hold over $10 million in gold and keep them mining for years to come. If it pays out this summer. We're hoping to do 1,000 ounces here. We have a lot of stripping to do, though. So in the meantime, we've just been stockpiling old drift tailings. So hopefully there's lots of gold in them. Parker has split his Alaskan greenhorns in two. His wolf cut crew is opening virgin ground holding high grade pay, but it's 30 feet down and will take weeks to get to. Across the claim, his drift cut crew is on the hunt for a quick score to bankroll the whole operation. The wash plant we've leased is coming to site and this is the pad it's going to sit on. Oh, I hate leasing wash plants, and it's never worked out well when I've leased them. But the plant we are getting built isn't ready yet. We're going to have this wash plant coming in, and then we'll be ready to sluice this pile over here. So there'll be plenty for the plant to do. we got to get it going here. Overseeing the setup of Parker's leased wash plant, new foreman Mark Fors. I'm always excited when we have new people showing up, you know, and a fresh chance at finding another ace guy. Mark, you want to move forward just a little bit? There's also a chance at finding a big dud. You know, the biggest issue is that Mitch isn't here. I need somebody that I trust to take this on. The next thing here will be putting this wash plant on the pad, and we'll see how she sets up there. That's level right there. Nice. Good job, Mark. It's perfect. Good job. First big Woo. piece is in place. Got it up here without flipping it. Didn't even go in the pond. Good job. Now the conveyor. Grab that ratchet strap right there and just throw that on there. We need to go six inches out that way. Parker's counting on his least red rocket wash plant running 150 yards an hour. But first, 
Mark needs to maneuver in the 20-foot tailings conveyor. Is that going to fit? We'll see. He needs to go down a little more, right? Yeah, but this end needs to go that way, Parker, like about a foot. Yeah, it can't because he needs to go down because the screen deck's in the way. Oh, Let me have a look at this. Oh, you piece of You're on the wrong side of some pipe. That'll never work. Uh, we got a piece of steel on our way. Well, this is These things come off. Oh, that's it. You have to take the outside ones out. That helps a lot. Obstacle out of the way. Mark can lift the conveyor into position. Straight down. Straight down. It's not on me. I'm not trying to kill you, I promise. You're not the first. There we go. The final piece? the four-ton hopper that will feed pay dirt into the plant. All right, out that way a little bit. There you go. That's dead nuts. Uh, I just need a rock. Yukon hammer. Look at that. Let's go, fire it up. It's coming together. See if the thing works. You ready? Oh, yeah. You've got to be kidding me. This always happens. Come on. Now we're getting somewhere. You want me to throw the first scoop in? Yeah. All right, let's make some money. Or lose more. <laughs> Two years in the making, Parker's Alaskan mine is finally up and running. All right, here's the first scoop going in. He's one step closer to finding out if his new operation will secure his mining future. It's good to be sluicing, but I'm just nervous about the ground. It's drift tailing, so we didn't drill it. I we have no idea what's going to happen. Hi. Hey, youngster. Do you want to come in? Oh, what's up, those man? Welcome home. Hey, oh, young man. How was Alaska? It's going good. How's the rental wash plant been working there? Has it been steady? It's a nice plant. Yeah. We ran some of the drift tailings. Oh, yeah? And they went an ounce an hour. Like, it's nice looking stuff. And if it keeps going an ounce an hour, then like, we'll be fine. We're just chugging along over here. And thank you for that. Oh. I, I, I do appreciate you guys. I know there's a lot that you're dealing with, but I appreciate you guys keeping the wheels on the bus over here. Well, pretty yeah. cool though that we got two operations rolling. It's just kind of like exploration over there. I mean, hopefully it can be a- That's what I'm billing it to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, you know, it can be the new part of this company because, man, we need some dirt. Like, we are burning through it. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are. Yeah. You ready, Sparky? This is big red. So we got 60, 90, 100, 150, 2, 200.05. Worth $340,000. Yeah, so red, Red's been doing good, right? It's been doing his thing. It's Lucifer is the same situation. Here we go. 10, 30, 90, 100, 150, 200, 257.25. Worth over $430,000, a combined total of over $770,000. Good job. We're getting there bringing Parker's season total to 4,788 ounces. Now, what you need to do is find us some more dirt. Yeah. So hopefully it's in Alaska. Well, thanks for funding my hobbies, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it makes me feel better about blowing a bunch of cash over there. It's so nice 
to be over there and know how much pride you know you put in your work and it shows and I really appreciate it. This is our last season here, so we're just really trying to get as many ounces as we can. Every grain of dirt right now counts. We are out of pay on the bear cut. This is the last scoop. Another cut done. How's it going, Chris? Hey, Mitchell. Just waiting for the thing to run out, and we'll shut her down. Man, the bear cut's been a huge cut, but uh, we're to the end of it right here. Yeah, no kidding. You got to that pretty quick, man. Yeah, so now we got to get that runway cut opened up. How's that coming along? Uh, we still got a lot of overburden on the runway, so we don't have any pay dirt ready for Big Red right now. We're looking at at least two weeks downtime minimum. Wow. That's not good. No, not by any means. Twenty-eight-year-old Parker Schnabel is stretched thin, running two mines in different countries. The last few weeks, I've been in Alaska. You know, we had a rough 10 days startup, and now it's starting to smooth out. We've got a plant running over there. There's gold coming in. In the Yukon, his crew are racing to mine out the massive airstrip claim before the water license expires at the end of the season. We have to get all of this mine this year. So it's basically a use it or lose it. It's important that we get everything that we have left to mine this year stripped and on pay. Half a million square feet of what we have left is not stripped. And this is pretty late in the year to be stripping. Parker's crew have already mined out 48 of his 90 acres at the airstrip, the keyhole, easy street, and bear cuts. Now they're running pay dirt through Slucifer from the 18-acre payback cut and continue to strip the last and largest of them all, the 24-acre runway cut. They need to get at least five acres down to pay this week before they can fire Big Red back up. So Big Red will sit until all the stripping's done. We really can't afford the time, but um, it's just going to mean sluicing later in the year. Down to just one wash plant, it's all hands on deck at the runway cut until it's completely stripped, except for one crew member. So right now I'm in the payback cut. You know, there's a lot to do, and I'm pretty much over here on my own. So trying to keep the wash plant going. While Slucifer plant boss Tyson Lee digs out payback cut pay dirt in the 750 excavator. You know, it's just a struggle trying to keep ahead. Parker in the D11 and foreman Mitch Blaschke in the 700 strip overburden in the runway cut. This is probably the most behind we've ever been in opening a cut and having things ready. We've had so much on our plate. And, you know, here we are just trying to get through it all and trying to do it before the snow flies. And what the? Oh, whoa, whoa. There's only one thing that smells like that, and that is coolant. That is not good. Looks like we just blew our radiator here and it's blowing right on the exhaust manifold. Not what we need right now. Yo, Taylor, you got a copy, man? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, buddy, you want to make your way over to the 700 here? It looks like it lost the radiator. We got a whole bunch of coolant spewing out right on the exhaust. I, I mean, the biggest thing here is just the lead time on getting parts. For sure, it's going to be a few days minimum to lose something like the radiator in this 700 when we've got all this dirt to move. I need another big excavator over here. Uh, I'm not sure where I'm going to get one of those from right now. Hey! How's it going, Mitch? 
Oh, we've had better days. What's going on? Oh, the 700 just blew the rad. Oh, really? Yeah, like bad. The problem is we're in the middle of all that mud right now. Yeah. And without a big excavator, there's no way we got a fighting chance of getting through it. Well, I know you're doing everything you can to keep up with Lucifer, but man, we really need the 750. Hey, What's Mitchell. How's it man? How's it going, buddy? Hope you don't mind me not standing up. I'm just nice and warm right here. At Indian River, Wash Plant Big Red barely ran half a day before running out of pay. So it's down to Slucifer to keep the Schnabel crew in the game and on the gold. How's it going, hey, guys? Keith. Oh, she's going, man. Oh, it's been a week, man. Not the coolest thing having turned Slucifer down, but definitely we weren't going to get through that mud with uh, 480. No way. Yeah, I'm, no doubt. I'm glad you guys didn't get in a punching, pushing, fighting, arguing mode over who gets what. It, what, it what just got repossessed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Temporarily. <laughs> Hey there, What's youngster. Up? Hi. How you doing? Good. How are Good. you guys? Uh, 700 blew the rad, but we got her back together. And... Well, you know, when the 750 left, I had to turn the plant down a little bit just to kind of keep up because the 480 isn't able to oh, dig. Oh, to get enough pay up. Yeah, it was a struggle. Hopefully, we don't notice it too much right now. We definitely lost some, some uh, yardage for sure this week. Yeah. Well, you're holding it like it has some weight to it. Well, I'm he's old. trying to trick you. I'm old and weak. Five ounces. Last week, running two wash plants delivered a combined total of 457 ounces. You ready, T? Okay. I see zero. That's a good place to start. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully that's not where it finishes. 20, 40, 60. Got a lot of tip on that thing. 80, 100, 120, 140, 150, 170. Oh, 200, 209.5. Worth over three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's not bad. That's, that's not bad. If we run comparisons, last season at this time we had forty-two hundred and fifty-one ounces. This season we have forty-nine hundred and eighty-four ounces. Hey, bad. We're just a hair shy of five thousand. We'll work all week trying to get rid of that overburden. Maybe we'll have two plants running, but we got a lot of work ahead of us, so. Uh, no guarantees there, but we'll do everything we can. Yeah, I'll try to give you guys some buffer, but this whole season is working with none, yeah, right? For sure. Like every day we don't have two plants running is another, you know, day that we're staying. That's what Mitch and I talk about the first day we get here. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas I'm go. like, no, 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 don't, don't worry about it. Cool. Cheers. Cool. Cheers, guys. Five thousand next week. See you guys at dinner. Just another day in the office. Come on, glory hole. Well, that's already a good feeling getting full penetration with them rippers. Yeah, I keep watching uh, the cut wall, just making sure that nothing's going to spring a leak on you. Well, it's nice to know that you got my back here, bud. After patching a hole in the wall of the wolf cut, Parker Schnabel and his crew are racing at breakneck speed to mine out the cut. Well, it's all a little bit precarious and temporary, and I want to widen this area out in here. It is sort of working, sort of kind of. I'm just going to rip out of here, clear up a few things that I need to deal with, come back and give them a hand until this is done. Like, we are at 111 loads out of the wolf cut right now. Depending how soft the bedrock is up here, I bet we'll get another 40 loads of pay out of it, too. Oh, we got problems. Oh, that's not good. We have a breach. While ripping the wolf cut with the dozer, Phil has opened up a hole in the floor of the 30-foot deep cut. Hey, that's coming out so quick. There's more water coming out than we can pump. I actually think we've hit an old mine shaft because there's a point where it's bubbling up. The area around the wolf cut is riddled with an abandoned network of mine shafts and tunnels that have filled with water over decades. 
Now, all this water is pouring back into the cut, threatening to shut Parker's operation down once again. Might be able to get down to here and at least reach out. Yeah, I'll try. Throw some. It's the second time in just two weeks that the crew have struck an old timer's mine shaft. Mike's doing his best. He's put tons of dirt in that hole right now and it's just eating it. It's not doing anything. Oh, she is pouring out. Wow. Is it coming up out of the ground right there? Yeah. I'm just worried about this whole thing coming down. You guys will have to evacuate out of the cut. That digger's going to be in a lot of trouble. I don't know how to get that out right now. You want me to get that excavator out of there? That's a very good idea. Is he going to be right getting out of there? That's his call. This is the first time I've ever had a life jacket inside of a cab. It's still coming up. I'm going to make myself a way out. Man, the water is deep. So deep. When's too deep? When it's in the cab. Pull yourself up. You'll have to probably push your tracks up to get up onto that. Hell. You've got this, mate. Come on. Oh, he's done it. Well, he's good. Yeah, he's home. Yay. He's home free. Bloody good job, Jared. You did well. What a hole. What a shame. We're lucky we got it out when we did. What a nightmare. We're just not going to beat it. We're not going to win. There's no way we're getting any pay out of that anytime soon. Park is probably going to be pretty annoyed. Parker's $250,000 cut is again drowned in nearly 30 feet of water. Stupid place. It's the stupidest business in the world. What are we doing? Lighting money on fire. I know, all that hard work. Hopefully there's some bloody gold in it. After searching for two and a half years to find and mine new ground, Parker's finally weighing his first gold from virgin ground in Alaska. Hey, Parker. Hi. Hello. How are you guys? Good. Good. Well, pretty good. Oh, Philly. Here. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. They need it. I don't really know what to think, like, it's just that's a lot of water that was coming into the pit multiple times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, multiple. Yeah. So let's see what this is. So far, Parker's crew have only recovered 108 ounces from old timer tailings, far short of his 1,000 ounce target. Thirty-eight point six ounces. Worth just $66,000. Bringing the Alaska claims total to 147 ounces, worth just $250,000. With more than $500,000 invested in the property, Parker is underwater. Not what we were hoping for. Well, I'm glad that we have a big operation in the Yukon because it's a uh pretty big failure, really. It's just a matter of whether it's worth continuing or not. 
Well, there's no saving this, is there? And not much reason to if it's just mud to bedrock. Right. Yeah, let's just call it a season. And whether we continue this project, find a new one next season. But no matter how that all shakes out, I want to try to find a role for you guys. If you guys are interested in coming back next season. Thank you. Yeah, yeah you definitely. Um, listen, I just really appreciate the work that you guys have done and, and the effort that you've put into it. Thank you, guys. And even though the gold wasn't great, I feel like there's so many positives to come out of it. I've never worked with a team who have such good work ethic. You can put them pretty much anywhere, and I know they'll do a good job. Parker still wants me around. Um, didn't get fired, so that's a positive. And we'll have to wait and see what's next. Doesn't feel too good. Um, the water kicked our So I'm not sure if next year's plan involves uh, that particular piece of ground or not. We're getting close, but the weather is It's mid-September, and king of the Klondike, Tony Beats, is on track to sail past his 5,000-ounce gold. The rate we're going, we can hit it. Ugh, how the weather would smarten up, eh? Only 900 ounces short, Tony's all in on the 80 pup cut, which last week delivered over 500 ounces of white channel gold. I mean, we got some great gold waste coming out of 80 pub these days that are nothing but great pay in there, piles of it. And I would really like to see that continue. But with all this rain in the water in that pond, there'll be a bit of dike work. We had some issues with them already this year that we had to build them up and fix them. 12 weeks ago, Tony started sluicing 24 hours a day, doubling the water flowing from the trommel into the settling ponds below. Tony, Tony, do you copy? We've got multiple breaks in a dike. They have to build these dikes up, and we'll end up with a pretty decent road. Forcing Tony to shut down to build up and strengthen the dikes. That looks good. That looks good. Now, with water levels rising again, Tony is going on the offensive. You don't want to f with your pond, so better make sure everything is in A1 shape. Nick D. Copy, Nick D. Copy. Yeah. Yeah, take that 220 to the dikes, right by the pump area there, because all this water coming down these days, sure as we're going to have to do something down there. Yeah. Weather is it has been raining a lot, so uh, water is going to keep coming in. So uh, I do got to hurry up so this uh, dike doesn't break. Very wet already. I hope I won't sink here. So oh, I'm really going down here. This is not good. This is bad. We have to get that thing out of there because while it is nicely sitting there stuck, we're not sluicing, so Tony's not making any money. Tony Beats has shut down his entire mining operation after cousin Mike sunk an excavator into a settling pond. Well, this morning, the plan was to get his excavator out with two other excavators. And uh, yeah, that didn't work. So now we brought in uh, some bigger equipment. To drag it out, Tony's bringing in reinforcements. The 18-ton D6 dozer and the colossal 115-ton D11. 
Okay, Mike. Yeah. What I'm thinking of doing is I'm gonna bail this water out. Yeah. Then what you should do is take that other hole, start bailing core staling. Okay, yeah. I do think we're gonna bring in the six to put some gravel in the hole, and then we'll just build a ramp in there. And then at the 11th, you had a 100 foot cable on it, and then we should be able to pull it out. Tony's plan? Use the 349 excavator to bail out the sediment surrounding the stuck 220. Next, use the D6 dozer to push coarse tailings into the pit and create a solid ramp. Then, drive the D11 onto the reinforced ramp so that the 850 horsepower monster can pull the 220 free. In order to get the excavator out, I'm gonna bail the water out. But as you see how wet it is in there, it's a swamp, it's a settling pond. But we are making a little bit of progress here, I think. It's starting to look better already. But at the same time, Mike will back fill it a little bit with tailings, so we get a bit of a ramp going. Then I'll move that dozer in place. Might as well get the power. We have it, let's use it. have little dimples. <laughs> See, mom has breakfast for you. <laughs> Heavy rain has slowed production on Paradise Hill all week, but Tony Beats is hoping the 80 pup continues to deliver big gold, helping him smash his 5,000 ounce gold. No, there's no action. We lost a couple hours when Mike having the excavator stuck because the guy doesn't listen to your directions, drives right across the Settling pond, guess what? Sings at 220. I heard that. Did you give directions in English, Dutch, or Frisian? I forget. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no damage done. Took us what? Two, three hours to get it out? Yeah. Something like that? It came out a lot easier than I thought it would. That was my engineering, by the way. Of course, you're going to get good at engineering getting them out when you keep getting them in there. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> nice, Mike. Nice. I'll <laughs> remember that too. <laughs> Practice makes perfect, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, weigh it up, Mike. Ready? Pull it. Okay, let's go. 10, 15, 20, 30, 40. To keep the family on track. 80, 90. Tony needs over 300 ounces. 240, 250, 260, 270, 280, 290, 300. 470, 480, 490, 499.84. Worth 850,000, bringing their total to 4,601 ounces. That's looking pretty good for six days. Absolutely, that 80 pub does very well. Actually, that has been doing really well. Yes, sir, that does exactly. Need a bigger tray next time because this one barely fit at all. We have a day more sluicing, but the, it's still good gold. Well, it looks like it's paying good, so that's the best part. I mean, it, uh, we're getting close, but the weather is the <laughs> so we're not quite there yet. Anyway, so far so good. I'm pretty happy with it. Right? Me too. When you do a million bucks in a week, what the is the matter with that? Have to. On Tony Beat's hunker cut, Jason Fraser and his Winchester crew are nearing the end of their first season in the Yukon. It's been a long summer. Everybody's looking forward to getting home. It's part of the price we pay to chase that golden dream, I guess. They need a haul of 200 ounces to go home with gold in their pockets and pay their landlord, Tony. I do think there'd be a couple ounces in that. Yeah, I hope so. I, like I think we can get somewhere around our goal of 200. Well, that's fine, because I get 30%. I hope you do well. Yeah. Leave nothing behind. So far, they've brought in just 106 ounces. Now, they've almost cleaned out the cut and have a huge pay pile to run for the rest of the season. As far as pay for this season, that's the last of her. 
this here is the last little bit Butch found in the corner, and we're going to feed it through Winchester. John Van Tile trucks pay to the Winchester, the homemade double-barreled wash plant that he built on his driveway. She's been doing a good job all season. I hope she continues to do that. We're getting pretty late in the season. Now I feel the pressure a bit. The third member of their skeleton crew, ex-logger Butch Bouchard, feeds pay into the plant. At the beginning, I was just a rookie on the excavator. And what I look at, what I achieve here, I'm, I'm proud of that. We're on the last stretch, so we got 10,000 yards to Holy What's going on here? Jason, you got a copy, Jason? Yeah, I see it. Almost uh, stopped the third. Wait. What the happened? Chains on the ground. The chain? Drive chain. That thing? Yep. Yep, that's the little car. What happened? It's like the master link. The master link is the only link that can open and close, connecting the ends of the chain into a loop. If they can't fix it, the Winchester's twin drums can't spin. Now we got to feed it back through there, and we have to find a, another master link. Have a look if you want to feed that. I'll go find the link. Fake. I seen a bag of links here somewhere. There they are. Okay, Butch. The black button on the far side, turn it towards the opposite what it is. Yep. And turn the trommel on. Hold the button in. Yep. Okay, now let out slowly. Yep. Yep, that's the right direction we gotta go. So push the button in. Okay, now when you do it, my I'm gonna have my hands in here. Yeah. Just jog a little bit out, not too much. Okay. Because I don't want to get my hands taken apart here. Don't do this at home, folks. <laughs> okay. Good. Just a little bit till I get it down. Slowly. Okay. Oh. 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 Okay, no, hang on. Hold it right there. Let the button out. Found a master link. Huh? You got some? Can you climb up that ladder and grab this chain? You got that? Yeah. How close are we? A does her. Okay. Okay, put your tension back on if you want. Uh, there you go. All right. So, good to go? Good yeah. to go, buddy. Hey! The broken chain has cost the Winchester crew two hours of sluicing. They're back in the race to hit 200 ounces before winter shuts them down. It's only a matter of time before we start to get freezing temperatures. Time now is the absolute premium. On Tony Beat's hunker cut, the Winchester crew are battling to bring in 200 ounces of Klondike gold. But winter is closing in, and they're still 94 ounces short. The machines don't like to work when it's really cold. The guys don't like to work when it's really cold. So are they on their way up? Or yeah, happening? they'll be their final way out. Look on the bright side, we're getting that cat clean. Yeah. Because you and I weren't going to go back there. No. There you go. <laughs> so there you go, right? I was, I was happy they took it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I hope they do well. Yeah. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, guys. Hey. 
So how did she turn out, gentlemen? We're not sure, but she turned out. It kind of sucks you guys trouble went down. Yeah, it sucks. All, all electrical, burned all the wires off. Yeah. Well, at least you can all still be able to get out in decent weather. Yeah, that's the upside. So were you happy with how your trauma worked out? Yeah. All in all, for being a home-built plant, she stood up pretty good. Shall we weigh some gold? Yeah. Let's weigh some gold. Yeah, let's weigh some gold. Hey, fellas. There we go. This is what it's all about. You got a count there, Butch? Yeah. The Winchester crew have banked 106 ounces, so need 94 ounces to hit their goal. 35, 45, 55, 60, 70, 78. You go in, man. Try and 90. Yeah. 101.1. Wow. Yeah, yeah, man. Pretty good, guys. Right? We hit it. We got there. That makes 207. For me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Worth over $350,000. Jason and his crew have hit their target in their first season in the Yukon. So that's pretty damn nice. I hope didn't overspend, so there's some left, but I mean, yeah. Well, there's the landlord we have to deal with. <laughs> yeah. It's always the <laughs> landlord is the bad boy, isn't it? <laughs> See? <laughs> hey, for you guys first year in the Yukon, you got your feet wet, you made a couple ounces, perfect. Just enough to whet your appetite to come back, isn't it? That's the way it happens, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just teasing you along. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. We're going to hey, bail. Thank, thank you, guys. It's been I'm an awesome you guys, season. Thank glad you. you guys have a decent season. Anyway, get the out. Yeah. Come back next year, bring me some more money. How's that? Fair okay. enough. Slew Spear is feeling very heavy today. We're moving the plant right now, fully dressed here. We certainly don't have time this late in the season to fully disassemble the plant for the move and then put it all back together. The sluice runs are shaking really good side to side, and that's just because any bit of input you give it just gets amplified throughout the wash plant. You know, if you jerk the wash plant a little bit one way or the other, all that energy transfers through. So we're trying to be just smooth and steady here. Hopefully we don't end up breaking this thing. Right now, we're just approaching the runway that we built. With no flight schedule or way of communicating with planes coming in to land, Tyson will act as spotter. The last thing we want is to have this wash plant stuck there in the middle of the runway, have somebody wanting to land and not be able to. So just going to try and uh, get through there with no trouble. See what happens. Hey, Mitch, you got a copy, Mitch? Yeah, go ahead. Looks like a plane's coming in right now. Thanks for the heads up. I'll hold here. Looks like he's looping around and going to come in landing downstream. You know, when we built the runway, we had no intention of ever uh, going back to the Panama Canal. And uh, never did we think we'd be dragging a fully dressed wash plant back down this runway. Looks like he's heading towards Eureka now. So he might not be coming in for a landing. Yeah, man, I think we're good. We're going to go for it here. Here we go. Runway's clear. We're going for it. Oh, oh, hang on a sec, Mitch. We got a plane coming in. Oh, Yeah, that's pretty sketchy. Oh, that was a good spot there, man. All right, Tyson. Well, that guy landed here, but uh, I'm just going to get on the runway right now. So just keep your head on a swivel there if you see anybody coming in. My eyes are glued on the sky. Hopefully we can get this thing where it needs to be here before another plane's circling. Well, hang on there, Mitch. You're going to catch the sluices on the runway. Just have to take a little more out of this end. Man, go in there and widen it out as much as you can. So Slucifer is 32 feet wide from wing to wing, so we just got to widen our lower road a little bit here to make it so Slucifer can make it by. Doing pretty good on this plant move, but tearing a wing off could change all that very quickly. All 
right, we just got to keep it right down the center here. We got no room for air. Hey, we got something in the distance over there to the west. You see that? Just get her up there quick. Come on, baby. Let's go, let's go. All right, man, there it is. We got Sucifer past the runway. We're gaining on it. More than two hours after starting the move, Mitch and Tyson reach their final destination. Well, we are here at the Panama Canal, but now for the hardest part of this whole deal is getting this heavy wash plant up on top of that pad and getting it in place. You want to jump up here on the pad and help guide this thing into place? Copy that. Looking good, Mitch. Just keep her coming like that. That's a little easier said than done. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy. I want to flip it into the plant. It was to show how much Lucifer weighs and how the 750 is even struggling to pull it up. Lucifer on the pad, Mitch must rotate it 90 degrees into position. Like it? Oh yeah. <laughs> the last sluice for wash plant move of the year. It's in place, it's level, and we're happy. Nice job, there man. There we go. All that's left, connect the 120-foot-long super stacker that feeds pay to the plant and fire up. Let's throw some dirt in this thing. This is the first scoop from the Panama Canal going through Slucifer here. Now it's a matter of, uh, is there any gold in it? Hey, doing it. Hey, T. How's it going? Good. So far this season, Parker's Yukon crew has banked just under 6,000 ounces, still way short of last year's 8,300-ounce gold haul. Quite the week, man. Yeah. Now, with the latest gold from three different cuts, it's time to see how close he is to a record season. Mitch, you ready for your baby? Let's hear it, man. Up first, Big red on the runway cut. 150, keep going. 230, 240, 250, 280, 290, 300 right on the dot. On the nose. Worth over half a million dollars. Next up, Slucifer's last gold from the payback cut. 20, 30, 40, 50, 70, 80, 100, 109.9. Almost $190,000. That cut went fine. Yeah, nothing special, but if we can't get special, we'll take consistent. <laughs> yeah. Finally, Slucifer's first gold from the Panama Canal cut. We almost had an airplane land on the pre-washed Slucifer. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Who has the right of way when you're moving a wash plant across the runway? <laughs> we were kind of wondering the same thing. We definitely were bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Did it get any gold, Dumit? Oh, it got a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Let's check it out. Here we go. Here we go. 10, 30, 40, 60, 100. Here we go. 120, 140. 159, look at that. Not bad. I have a lot of hours on that. No. Not sure. Good, good. Yeah, I mean, great start, right? Just three days sluicing has delivered $270,000 of gold, bringing their season total to 6,708 ounces. To beat last season's record haul, Parker now needs his Panama Canal gamble to keep paying off. All right, you guys, let's get sluicing. We're yeah. gonna try and find some more. Thanks, Dumit. Okay, buddy, take care. 
I gotta bag this stuff up. Tyson, Tyson, we got smoke coming from the plant. A lot of smoke coming from the generator. I got the Jenny, you get the water. Yeah, go, go. The generator looks like it's on fire. Let's get up, man. I don't know, this thing's about ready to burn up. What's going on? Dude, everything stopped. Oh, no. What's that? Dude, look inside. at this. Oh, dude, she smoked, buddy. Like, bad. The other end of that goes right into the generator head, and it's cooked right off. I mean, you know, this is the engine. This is what powers the generator head. Generator head spins, makes power. Makes everything work out here. No generator, no power to run Slucifer or its conveyor belts. This generator head is cooked. There's going to be no, uh, you know, blowing the dust off there and putting it back to work by any means. Yeah. We don't have a backup generator other than what Big Red's running and it needs it. Yeah, there's no spares. I'll go get on the phone. Hopefully, we can round up another generator. Sounds no. good. All right, I'll see what I can come up with. Good luck. We got to find a generator, and we got to find one fast. Yeah, this is Mitch Blaschke. I'm looking for a 175K dub Jenny. So you got nothing. Damn it. Howdy. How you doing? Oh, I've had better days. Tell me about it. I'm trying to read this contract for this piece of ground. It's 50 pages. And I told him, I was like, man, like 50 pages? What are we doing? Huh? How are you doing? So, generator for sluice for full on went up in smoke and it won't do nothing. So, I got on the phone. I'm like, okay, well, let's just rent a generator or buy one. And the closest one I could get is two weeks out. Yeah, everybody I know that has a generator that'll run that is using them right now. Exactly. Um. And that's when I called around. Like, they had smaller ones, but nothing that'll power that whole setup. How much do you have left to sluice? I mean, there's a fair bit in there. Like, a couple days? I'd say, yeah, probably three days. I mean, we're close, but we're not done. Let's just... Leave it. Two days of sluicing, whatever. What can we do? Right. There's not many other choices, are there? Well, not at this point in time. We need power to be able to wash those rocks. I think if it's going to be down, we may as well just tear it apart, break the plant down, put it to bed. Okay. Okay. All right, thanks. Thanks, Mitch. Shutting down Slucifer for the season and abandoning the Panama Canal cut could put Parker's goal of mining out 100 acres and beating last season's total out of reach. The decision's been made. Slucifer is officially going to be done for the season now. The generator's dead and couldn't find one anywhere, so we're pulling Slucifer apart. And the thing is, we don't even know how good the gold is in Panama Canal. You know, getting in here, Parker, give us a week to do it. We got it done. It sucks to leave it all behind. That was quite a week, damn it. Just problem after problem. Oh, uh, yeah. So that was a really good idea with the super stacker. Put on life support there. But uh, unfortunately, that generator had different ideas. Is there very much pay left down there in, in Panama? I mean, there's a bit. There's definitely a, a fair bit to leave behind. Now we only got one wash plant. Yeah, it's going to hurt. 
Parker's Yukon total of 6,561 ounces is still over 1,700 short of last season's record haul. And Red's been running happy? Yeah. Big Red did its thing. It was just motoring along. This is Red right here. All right. All right. Last week, Big Red produced 300 ounces of gold out of the runway cut. Let her rip. All right. 20, 30, 70, 80, 100, 140, 170, 190, 200, 230, 240, 270, 280, 300, 355.95. Worth over $600,000. Not bad. Can't That's amazing, that. Mitch. This is going to be a bittersweet go away for Slucifer because it's obviously broken. T? So far, Slucifer has produced 159 ounces of gold from the Panama Canal. Here we go. 20, 30, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160. 172.35. Plus 400 ounces right there. That, that came off of Lucifer. Seriously? 572 ounces. In less than a week, the Panama Canal has produced nearly a million dollars worth of gold. It's probably like five ounces an hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's better than when we have two plants running. Yeah. This is the best cut we have ever run. That is nuts. Isn't that crazy? So last week, you know, it was 568 ounces. This week, it's 928 ounces. Over $1.5 million, bringing their Yukon total to 7,489 ounces. Almost a 1,000 ounce week. Almost a 1,000 ounce week. That is crazy. I like that. Yeah. That's wild. First season up here, he got a thousand all year banging away at it, just a 900 in a week. Yeah. Even way back when I was running the plant, first couple of years with you, we hit a 181 ounces. It's the biggest cleanup we ever had, 181 and ounces. That was right here. here, right here. Yeah, it was set up right where campus. Yeah. I was like totally stoked. We were mining in the pond behind this pond. Yeah. That feels like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? Goes by quick, man. Decade out here. I was almost a young man. I was a man. Well, I was here. <laughs> there, there. <laughs> Best week of the season, so that's good. Um, bad time for Slucifer to go down. I wouldn't have really worried about it too much if the ground wasn't as good as it is. We don't leave pay in cots, but we especially don't when it's five ounces an hour, so I'll have to sort that out. Um, we just have a little jam up here, so we're just stopping so that we can clear this out. And hopefully there's no holes underneath this dirt, because that's usually what causes a buildup here. It doesn't happen very often. Oh, I can feel a hole. That's not good. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Tony, you got a coffee, Tony? Oh, yeah. Uh, there's quite a hole in this plate. Do you want to come look? Well, that's a nice mess. We uh, will not be working here today by the looks of it. We'll see what we can come up with. Because if you don't take care of your crap, you're going to be down for quite some time. Damn it. Without a trauma, or kind of completely. I mean, there is plenty of issues with it. The trauma that is our main means of sluicing down here. That could be the difference between four and a half or five thousand ounces. King of the Klondike, Tony Beats, has hit a wall. Any day now, winter could shut down his whole operation, and his money-making machine is at a standstill. We should have fixed the thing three years ago when we got back here. We didn't taking our chances ever since. So this is what happens when you don't look after your I guess. Tony still needs another 400 ounces of gold from the 80 pup cut 
to hit his 5,000 ounce season target. I'm gonna go over shit with the boys because, you know, this is kind of silly. We gotta have to come up with something, try something, do something to get a couple of ounces for the time we're down with something else. Hey, guys. Hey, what's up? What's happening? Is that old Rumble mess? So when are we going to do some real fixes? There's a lot of things we got to deal with. I know there's a whole pile of problems with it, but I would like to see if we can squeeze the end of the season out of the thing. So like all the things wrong with the plant, it's going to be at least a week before we can even limp to the end of the season. At least a week. Fixing it. Just, just yeah, to get it ready to limp. We're down and we got to do something. Yeah. So what else is out there? Well, you can use the Moose Creek trommel. I mean, we can try. It shouldn't take too much to make it runnable. Well, it would be nice if you can keep on sluicing it. Eh? Yeah, but the last time we used it, that thing wasn't that great either. Tony's only other wash plant on Paradise Hill oh, you seen that, that, Kevin? is a mobile trommel he hauled out of Moose Creek two seasons ago. We got it. But on its first fire up, Disaster struck. Tell it out, that thing clogs rough, and then the water can't go nowhere. Forcing Tony to abandon it. They ain't cutting it. We can make it work. We got lots of pay still sitting there. There's no point in letting it sit there when we're going to be sluicing it. True enough. I mean, the last time we used it, we kind of called it quits a bit early. Mm -hmm. Decided. It. I wouldn't mind not if we got a bit of time while you're fixing the trauma. Let's take a half a day or whatever it takes to get that one set up. As long as it doesn't take too much time away from what you're doing on the big one, then we can attempt. So, Moose Creek trauma is. Let's go for it. At the main trauma, Tony puts his mechanics to work. Let's cut this old one out and lay a new one in. And let's do it. 600 feet away, he's tasked Len Hoekstra with ensuring the quick fix Moose Creek trommel will actually fire up. It all depends on the Moose Creek trommel now if we got our 5,000 ounces. So all the pressure is on me to get it going. We started this trommel up last time, it was years ago. So it will be a round to get it going. I don't like a sound in one of the hydraulic valves. I hear a noise in it. It looks like there is a little bit of air in the, in the hydraulics. The nah, it's a lot of oil, but that's not how it should be. It's always something with this thing. Tony, do you have a copy? Yeah, go ahead, Len. Heck, I got an oil leak. Okay, we'll be right there. Next thing, you know, the whole thing is not gonna work. The oil cooler, here. That's what I'm thinking. Mike, hold this up. Because here's the oil cooler. The trouble is that the last time we used it, we did not drain our oil cooler. By not draining the oil cooler, the oil cooler busted. At this point in the season, I'm really, really not going to want to with that. The thing is, if we run and we put the water to it, we're going to contaminate the whole system. Yeah. And that ain't going to happen. Or we say we take the oil cooler out of it. Your engine overheat without the oil cooler? Oh, well, we could, we could run nah. it long. No, we could run it long enough, Mike, to make yeah. it work. That's the thing. That's what we got to try. So what we're going to do is we're going to block off the oil cooler and just run it without. The oil cooler pumps cold water around the wash plant's hydraulic oil barrel, preventing it from overheating. But water was not drained from the fine copper pipes before winter. The water froze and expanded, causing the pipes to crack. If water contaminates the hydraulic oil, it will cause catastrophic damage. Tony's risky solution, 
drain the water and block off the oil cooling system entirely. What are we going to do if this doesn't work, Dad? I have no clue. I have no clue. So, we cut off our water supply to our oil coolers so that they cannot get any water. And once these are all tight, oil is topped up, we are good to go. Now that everything's buttoned up and tightened, put a bit more oil in it, and uh, yeah, we can get it spinning, get it in position. So, let's do some cleanup and get going. So, this is all ready to go, guys? Yes. Everything should be a okay and ready We've to go. We've got the water eliminated, doesn't go in there anymore. Correct. So, we'll fire up, lift the legs up, we'll see how it runs, yep. and then let's hook a cat to it. What do you think? Yep. Okay. Fire up, Len, let's yep. see what's going to happen, okay? Oh, I see. That part is working and good. Perfect. Off the ground it is. Yeah, we got her! We got her! To access the damage, Tony's crew must take the trommel apart. Okay, good, let's do it. Okay, Mike, lift it up. Swing the man, keep it going. First, they lift the conveyor out of the way. Mike down a bit, Mike down a bit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, hold it, Mike. Perfect, now let it down, Mike. Next, the giant 40-ton barrel. Whoa! If you want it done right, you're gonna have to do it yourself. Now this is a lot of effort to get everything out of here and moved. Hopefully when it's on the ground, we can have a better look. Maybe see if that crack is fixable, but... Uh, right now, let's just focus on getting it out. The barrel has not been moved for over 10 years. Is that good for you? Mike, I think you got to drive ahead of him, man. See if we can lift the Slowly. Mike down, Mike down. Perfect. Man, piece of cake, really. Now it's on the ground, we can have a better look. Make a plane. Holy oh. Yeah. These three are about ready to fall out. Like 80% of the wedges, all the welds are cracked. This is the one crack that's all the way through the thing. Tony's not gonna be too happy. What the is he? What do you got, Gavin? She Well, I knew that. I well, know a lot of your wedges are pretty worn. The crack on the ring's all the way through, at least the big one. There's two more that are started about a quarter way. Okay. I mean, we definitely can't run like this. This part here is about ready to snap off, and that'll not only the ring lock tight, just tear in the part. So, uh, long story short, if you had four or five welders throw at it, four or five welders being each other's way, but how about two of them, one on each side? I don't think it will get done. We don't have near enough people who can weld our air arc to do all this before end of season. Anyway, so we're going to call this quits then? But I don't think we have enough people in time to make it work in the time frame we have left. OK. That, well, that's sucks. the next year project. After a season fixing every machine on the hill, Kevin has finally met his match. 
the beach season is over. We better hope that we have a very decent cleanup then. Oh, yeah. Hey, guys. We're taking over your gold way. <laughs> After six months working alongside the family, Ruby and cousin Mike join the Beats for their final gold way of the season. Why are you guys here? What's that? So, so Michael, <laughs> yeah, why are you? Michael, your second year. Ruby, your what, seventh year? <laughs> My sixth year. Sixth year? <laughs> Yeah. Forever you. How to I go. can see the grays. I, hey. <laughs> um, I think we had a relatively good season. Did we do enough good enough job this year to hire us back next year? <laughs> I doubt that very much. <laughs> <laughs> it's on a year to year basis. You're stuck with like your new favorite son, Michael. Okay. And your new favorite daughter, Ruby. Okay, no. that's fine. Yeah. Bye. Anyway, last gold boy, guys. Yay. Done. Yeah. Over with. <laughs> right. Yay. Get the <laughs> out of here, so to speak. Hi. Right? Yeah. Now we're gonna go out with a bang or not? We'll have to find out. Tony gambled his final week on a glory hole, but the trommel died before he could sluice all its pay. Hey, right, Kevin, you ready? I'm not counting. <sighs> It's his turn to count. Let Nick count. There you yes, go. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, we all counted, count it, so it's your turn. It's your turn to count. Has Ruby right. counted yet? Yeah. yeah. yeah this Ruby isn't my first gold way. <laughs> Ready. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100. <laughs> Tony needs 400 ounces to hit a record 5,000 ounce season goal. To 10, to 20, <laughs> to 90, 300. 374, 420. Slow down, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. <laughs> the guy can keep up with you, Kevin. That's doing good already, Minnie. 470, 480, 490, 500, 510, 520, 590, 600, 610, 620, 660. There's more. 680, 6. 96.94.02. Worth $1.2 million. What? Holy crap. The Glory Hole delivered the best gold of the season and brings their final total to 5,295 ounces, smashing their record gold target and banking the beat's first $9 million season. That's a lot of ounces for a week. Yeah. Holy <laughs> For a week? Absolutely. We reached our goal. We're a little over. I'm very happy with it. I'm very happy with it. Me too. That just goes to show that when you hit a decent hole or in the hill, uh, it is it in is there. there. Well, I'm thinking how to get rid of all this because that's no, a lot no, of money. No, 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 no. I know, like, that's a piggy bank for I can take year. some. No. <laughs> I think I could I spend some, some of that. Well, I'm sure take some too? Would take I can some. spend some. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you could. You know what, I'm sure everybody would take some, but uh, yeah. no. But that nice big haul will help with whatever repairs are on the trommel for next year. Yeah, Thank it'll you. do the trick, Ruby. It'll definitely do that trick. Yep. Anyway, I may as well put it back in the jars, Kevin. Off to Mexico we go, what do you think, mm -hmm. Missy? Right? Sounds like a plan. I think so. Okay, thanks, guys. See ya. At the end of their first year as head of cuts and chief mechanic, Mike and Kevin... Oh, that went pretty good. ...have delivered big for the Klondike Kingpin. Anyway, the guys did a great job. Mike ran them cuts. That went good. Kevin oh, he did, did well. Fixing. That Kevin all went did good. well. No, I'm happy the way everything went. I, uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm happy, too. Anyways, I'm forward-looking going to Mexico. How about you? Hey, the weather is going to be one hell of a lot better than it is down here. Definitely. Yeah, let's wrap up and let's get out. We got this plant hustling. You got it pumping, huh? Yeah. The more you start revving it, the faster it goes, but the chance of it blowing up gets a lot better. You know, we still got a fair bit of dirt to get through down here. Well, if we don't get it this year, we don't get it, period. No. You know, the best thing is, we're out here because if something goes wrong, you want to catch it quick and get this thing fired back up. Yeah, yeah. for sure. If you want to pull an all-nighter with me here, if you want to feed the plant, I'll do tailings. We'll just keep it running tonight. Yeah, let's do her. That yeah, sounds let's... like a plan, Mitch. It's the end of the season. We're almost there. 
And we just gotta get the last bit of ground sluiced out before we get frozen out. For the final push, Mitch and Tyson will run Big Red through the freezing night. To protect the sluices, Chris Dumit insulates them with tarps. Hopefully with a couple turbo torches underneath here, it'll keep it from freezing up on us. We've had a sluice box freeze on us before, and it's not pretty. So Mitch and I just started our night shift here, trying to keep Big Red going. You know, worked all day, now I'm gonna work all night. We're just on the final lap here, just gotta get the last of these rocks through Big Red. Hey Mitch, you got a copy, Mitch? Yeah, go ahead. Looks like might have a bit of a jam up in the feeder here. Uh, I'm not surprised. She's probably just freezing up down there now, that, how wet that material got. This is not what we want to be doing right now. Let's try and get it out the bottom, and hopefully it'll all come down. I was hoping to have this thing done here before the sun comes up. Well, this ain't looking good. Oh, landslide. There we go, there we go. Let me, yeah, let me bump the belt. That material's freezing to the back wall. Things like a big ice box. Dumping that wet stuff just sticks right to it. We just gotta turn this back on, get it cleared out. Oh, this is gonna be a long night. How you looking? That's her. You good? Perfect. This is part of sluicing in the cold. You ready? Yeah. Back at it. With the way it's looking, we're probably going to be out of pay dirt, uh, well, hopefully before the sun comes up. You know, it's been a really long season this year. To think where we started off is... What the hell? Tyson, Tyson, shut it off. Something just let loose. Kill the feed. Kill the feed. Something is let loose on this walk plant. Looking back on these last 10 years, been involved in recovering over 50,000 ounces of gold. But I think the greatest thrill was watching a boy grow up to be a man. And that was quite an experience. It was great. It's time for Parker's final gold way of the season, and the last ever from his Indian River claim. What's up? Hey, Mitchell. T? How's it going, Dumit? Good, how you doing, buddy? Good, good to see you. Good to see you too, man. All right, Chris. Yes, sir. How'd things go? To beat last year's Yukon record-breaking 8,310 ounces, Parker needs his final week of the season to deliver 821 ounces of gold. This is Panama and the runway. All righty, here we go. We got 20. First up, the runway cut. 100, 120, 160. We got 200, Go 220, on. 260. Keep going. Come 360, <laughs> 388.5. Worth over $660,000. Almost 400 ounces. That got us a lot closer to where we need to be. Next, the final pay dirt from the Panama Canal, which last week delivered 572 ounces. You gotta remember though, we did not get a full four day run. It was a really short run, but for the hours you go. guys ran. 30, 40, 60, 80, 100, 130, 140, 160, 170, 200, 210, 230, 240.80 worth 
almost four hundred and ten thousand dollars. Probably the best two days we've ever had with one plant. Yeah. Ever. Yes. Ever. Ever. So for the week, we wound up with six hundred and twenty-nine point three ounces. What's our season total? Eight thousand one hundred and eighteen ounces. Almost two hundred ounces short of last year's record haul, but still nearly fourteen million dollars in gold. But I honestly believe you guys got all the gold that was there. We pretty well aced everything that we can control. Alaska didn't go very well. No. Terrible. It made me appreciate you guys and this place all that much more. Right. Big Red just on its own ran almost 2,400 hours. <laughs> it's so much loosened. Everybody did great and stepped up and rose to the challenge. Hell of a season, guys. Awesome. Go find us some more dirt, man. I'm working on it. Yeah. And it, no matter what, there's going to be a lot of uncertainty, but um, we'll make it work. I think we've got a bunch of people waiting to find out how we did, Parker. The first season here, we probably did a couple hundred thousand square feet. And this year, we mined just about four million square feet. It's a huge accomplishment, you know? And it took everybody here. I, I just really want to thank you guys for, for the effort that you've put out. I don't know what the future holds for us, but, you know, the one thing that I'm dead set on is I love working with you guys, and I want to keep that together. And so I'm doing everything I can to, you know, keep ground ahead of us and keep permits open and um, keep, the, keep the music playing. All right. Give me a cigar. All righty, buddy. Thanks for everything. Thanks, man. guys. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. It definitely makes me sad that we're not going to keep mining this property. I mean, like, this is where we started. This is where it all began. But it means we have time to go do something else, go find new ground, make another fortune, or lose the one we made. I'm Parker Schnabel, and you're watching Discovery Australia. Hit subscribe now to not miss out on any Gold Rush content.